Hello, Commander. Apparently so. Run Kill Dome, like you mentioned, Ghost, and... I mean, we did only get a few brief moments to go and actually get a look here at what's going on in terms of color and, you know, the whole game style here for the defense as they managed to get into a queue time a lot faster than expected. So we'll probably be able to deep dive a bit you. later in the matchup. But for the time being, it's probably going to be a lot of action here in this first round. Absolutely, absolutely. And nothing too wild and crazy, actually. Usually on, you know, these large maps, shoutouts to Saber Shark with the big... Big maps get big guns, uh, but we actually don't have too many super power weapons. We got a couple KRs and Igmars to, to go around. Of course, you do have Jet on the Saber. Jet, kind of the uh, team lead or the, uh, the the dedicated gamer boy for Katora as they make their way here th into Pit, which is kind of surprising. Normally, usually when you see Observation or Castle, that's kind of where the players are going to want to play around and or try and get control of. But it looks like they're actually going to be potentially going. Let's take a look here. Yeah, it is going to be a power play for the attacking team. Yeah, they just kind of let the attack get power quite early. A lot of map control established very early on. This is going to allow Jet to get some nice sight lines there with the Saber as well. And it's only a matter of time before they cross the bridge, try to find some nice pickups here as they've got plenty of flashes to work around. And a lot of time Ooh. as well because of that early map control. Gravy will get the first blood, actually drops into Swamp. That's a huge first pick here. A Molly gets tossed as well, but it's not enough to actually deal any damage. You're able to pivot away and just kind of keep back for a little while. It does burn through some seconds on your clock overall. But again, they have all the time oh, in the no. world to kill, but that's not a great name play. That's an oh. unfortunate T. Okay, and now we're in a five on three. This actually might be a pretty bad setup here for the attack. Well, unfortunate TK, but on top of that, it was also the shrapnel damage because I think he threw it and then the wall said return to sender. And yeah, now it's just, oh God, that that's painful. I mean, right off the bat, my biggest concern was pushing through this little area right here. You have this massive, absolute monstrous choke point that the uh, teams are going to have to play through. <laughs> the grenade really did not help that situation. Oh my, oh my. Um, yeah, Jet also losing Saber, of course, that means the defending team is going to have now Saber and Mop for their next round here, which is, well, it's not the end of the world that, that they have it. I mean, depending on the, the title set, again, we can, once we uh, get a chance here to take a look at it, we'll be able to kind of break that down. But again, having, having Saber on the defense is always nice, because now you can kind of, you can be a bit more aggressive, you can kind of roll some dice. We're going to have Kill House and Factory, so again, uh, Kill House... A little bit on the smaller side, but uh, let's take a look here. So we do have a breezeway, which usually means we're going to have a, uh, an open space. But taking a look at the stats here, well, um, I'm kind of surprised that we don't see a negative in terms of damage on uh, Sinister for... Well, I guess that 60 damage is probably from Friendly Fire, so I don't think it really calculates <laughs> all of the damage. But, oh, poof, that, yeah, that's not really a good way to start this, uh, this, ser this series here. At least no, not at all. And you talked about the aggression with the saber. I feel like one of the main driving factors of that is because you don't have to reload after your first shot. You're oh, granted a second chance instantly. What? Oh, no, absolutely. It's, I mean, oh, okay, mop, sorry. mop versus saber. The, the, the power of the mop is, you know, if you get a headshot, it's a one shot, one kill sort of deal on the attackers. But the problem is you have one shot. It is pure risk, pure reward. Yeah. Saber, I'll just put you know three down the range and then hope an attacker just, or defender decides to peek again, and then you're, you're good to go. But in this case, they've got both. They can be really flexible, and you can see that already. Marbles with the Saber. Oh, okay, no, he's actually going to be using the Mop. I'm really, I, we didn't get a chance to see how much ammo was dropped as well, but Gravy. Gravy's going to be on that Gravy train with the, the auto shot. He'd probably be sitting somewhere where we can kind of expect these you know really close quarters uh, fights, maybe through office or maybe even uh, sitting inside kitchen. Yeah, potentially. I'm not going to lie. I thought you said something other than yeah, so I completely just starstruck there. That, that, <laughs> that's all right. Get, get all the awkward moments out of the way in the beginning of the matchup, and then we can get towards the serious stuff here. Well, here, what For I'll do the is... Attack... Oh. <laughs> sorry, sorry, <Yeah>. go ahead. <laughs> Okay, for the attacking side, it looks like Kachura, they're opting to potentially go in through the back red door, mm -hmm. getting control of club early on, and I don't blame them, that is probably the easiest way to get into the site other than using, you know, a wall charge into one of the fenced off areas and going into breezeway, that's kind of a... A more direct approach but it can be quite risky but it looks like they're also opting to go in towards reception as well. A split take, always love to see it, especially on Kill House. So they did this kind of cute little, like... They quiet steps towards the uh, or towards red door. Then they, it's a bait that you know there's gonna be a bunch of people going office. 
But now the uh, two guys that they actually want to have breach red also kind of sprinted back. So Gravy's still in the right position. He's good to go and is... No, he actually backs off, which is kind of quite surprising. There is still a grenade for the attackers to utilize. So they're going to... Oh, that Molotov was clean. Oh, that Molotov was so good to completely stop the aggression here from the uh, Team Kutura. Adaxi holding down this angle actually got Merchant while... Uh, that was going on, and now Dylan with a shotgun. You really can't push through in that case, so he's going to have to wait until these attackers try to get their way through, but Gravy comes in and at least trades off with Roach, and now it's a two on three. Again, Mop still sitting on Breezeway. Might be able to come down and support, but he needs to get over here to support his team. It's At this point, it's a two on two. Marble's kind of just playing around with time. Yeah, I mean, honestly, for Danger Duels, they just all played their part quite well. Gravy was able to allow the attack to funnel directly into him with the full auto, and then there was no pressure established inside of reception. Dylan falls as oh. well, and it appears that Loaf will also meet his maker by Marbles, who finally stepped up and managed to leave the site to go get his frag of the round. It's 2-0 and oh already for Danger Doodles, as they are doing phenomenal here in this first set. I also want to point out that grenade that uh, was brought into the into kill dome was actually left. So Adax Adaxi was able to pick that up. And taking a look at our stats here, yeah, Gravy really kind of popped off, of course, with that auto shotty. Marbles, I mean, all you got to do is click ahead and you get basically a guaranteed 125 damage. So, I mean, we're, we're pretty much seeing exactly what you would expect from, from that kind of a round. Um, I mean, what's kind of fascinating here, just based off of these, these stats alone, though, is that we don't really have much damage on the you know Katora team i mean obviously they've lost two rounds so you'd kind of expect something on the lower end scale but i mean we have you know jet and dylan they haven't even made their presence in the game they're still at zero i mean that's not even like a bullet of damage that has gotten across i mean just shutting down players like that is monumental for keeping the momentum for your team as well as driving it into operation jupiter grand here on factory yeah no ugly factory as everyone has coined it that. yeah unfortunately Ugh. although we know donut put his heart and soul into that map and he did say openly he didn't want it to be a competitively viable map so i guess it's a pretty self-explanatory so why is it here so. sorry I'm <laughs> very opinionated about that well i don't know if we've yeah. uh, if you've gotten a chance to see his his new crea creation is the word i'll use i, I don't want to say abomination because then i'll probably Hold get on, added by donut you'll probably come and find me um, but it's, I kid you not, basically it's what would happen if, you know, the, the silos and walkways broke and the entire main floor became toxic goo. So, you know, visually it's a very beautiful map and it's wonderful to take a look at. And then you try and play on it and you go, oh, this is an entire walkway that I have to just walk down and pray a mop doesn't kill me? Yeah, all right, this will be fun. Let's, let's just see how, let's just see how it goes. <laughs> And then, and you know, when you're trying to push in against, like, Global Breakout, Yakuza, TBD, rest in peace, Katora, you know, all of these absolute gamer team uh, teams out here, and it's like, well, I guess I'll just die then. Yeah, we got the privilege of getting to cast that. Oh, you did? Literally Fantastic. round one. Mm -hmm. Round one oh. of the first best of three matchup. Nice. It was nice. so defender favor because nobody knew what to do. You basically had like one guy play up in fan mm -hmm. and then everyone just ran green and hope mm -hmm. nobody defended it properly. And 99% of the time you'd have to still funnel through barbed wire once you leave through mm -hmm. uh, the mm -hmm. green room, which was I think server or storage. And then you would just die probably by a mob. It's so, so it looks tactical. Here from, yeah, it was incredibly tactical indeed. It looks like we are going to have a server play though by Katura. They're already rushed inside the building. Grenade is Some nothing. utility being used quite early on. And oh, oh god, there goes the wall charge. Down goes the Daxi. I'm expecting they weren't probably prepared for that. I don't that think they were expecting that one, no. <laughs> oh, not at all. It's a five on three off the rip. It's only a matter of time before Marbles gets flushed out of office, but he'll manage to bring one down before he meets his inevitable maker, and that will allow him to get a little more room to breathe here, potentially. Gravy gets one off screen. Dylan now shuts down Marbles. They have office control, but technically we're in a two on two, as Roach is nowhere in sight. He's looking to grab a better weapon here to be more impactful later in this third round so that will give plenty of time to prep here and make sure that the defensive side of danger doodles can just play for time potentially and really not overexpose themselves gravy's on such little hp but he'll still win that fight with the ingmar down goes dylan both gravy and ty are one shot away from meeting their doom and if you look on the other side loaf and roach are still at full hp one shot and they'll be able to win their 1v1 confrontations and they still have plenty of time 
time left to get that diffuse down on the bomb. Ty will fall. It's just Gravy with the Ingmar playing in a rat position. And I'm not too sure if the attack is fully aware as to where exactly this defender's located at. They'll go for the drop down. It seems like they know pretty damn well. And Gravy will now be fell on top of that too plenty of time left to defuse and we'll finally get to see Katura's first round here it was very nice it was <clears throat> i was kind of curious as to why they decided to door breach uh server farm but you know it kind of worked out that brought the wall charge in um the it seemed almost like the um the danger doodles team sorry i was kind of looking at my notes here um you know as they were trying to hold off the aggression you know you had a daxi more or less kind of playing by himself. I know that we had, uh, who was it, Marbles, probably watching the blue door, but after that wall charge kind of broke in, it obviously kind of created a new paradigm that they weren't really prepared for. And then it was just one player got caught out, then one player and a half got caught out, and it was just constantly, it was never a 2v1 situation, which is normally what you want to have on the defender's yep. side. So really just kind of, it was on the Danger Doodles to try and get creative with that one. Again, they had both Saber and Mop to utilize, so it's not like they, they couldn't have just, you know, said, hey, we're going to stop here. You don't come through this door because I've got two guns that will absolutely destroy you. They actually only brought the Saber. Moving back into the same old kill dome we saw a few rounds prior, the biggest issue mm -hmm. for Katura when they were playing on this tile set on their attacks was they ended up just funneling yep. in through jungle. Merchant highlighted that, and if we see that happen again, that's going to be an easy win here for the defense. Funny enough, that will now be Katura. So potentially opting to either just insta flash before mollies can get prepped in towards the top of that bridge area or going around potentially into obs and just sacrificing more utility that might be the better play because the fallback potential here on this tile set is huge unless we see a potential backside take in towards obs that might actually work <clears throat> out here for danger doodles but that is still a pretty big commitment absolutely Honestly, that's kind of just how you you, you explained it perfectly. That's just how the the teams need to, the both teams need to kind of play. Defenders obviously yep. know that they just need to slowly try and bleed and let these guys come in from observation and from that kind of absolutely monstrous choke point that is uh, this this bridgeway. And attackers need to know how they want to try and push in. We can already see that they they know they know after how how this went. They want to try and push observation, which I think is a great idea. It gives you a little bit more wiggle room. I mean, obviously, it's still two massive kind of funnel points that these these teams are these or excuse me that uh, the attackers got to go through, but it's a lot better than having one, two, potentially three, maybe even a fourth gun looking at just one. You can try and get a little bit more creative um, with your game plan now. What's interesting enough here is we're already seeing that uh, Katora isn't actually shooting out the windows here from uh, giving you that kind of line of sight into bomb sight, which is, again, I love talking about the different teams and how they, they, they like to play. As soon as Danger Doodle spawned in, went straight for it. They were knocking out every single every single window. They wanted to get it. Merchant's going to be our, our point man to let the defending team know attackers are going to be all rolling in through beach. But the question now is going to be, how do these defenders handle this? Looks like they'll have to try to stall this observation take. Ty will oh, lead this the charge. Line is Here's fast. the as well. They just run through the molly. It works out perfectly. Down goes one. There's a refrag as Ty will now fall. Loaf is trying his best to hold off this onslaught, but it's not going to be good enough to find a second here. Four on three, favoring the attacking side now. Danger Duels have gotten a great lead so far. All they need to do is burn through these last couple of mollies and make sure they don't get their heads ripped off by a potential mop, but there's no mop in play. It's an Ingmar, a Gruber, and then a Nat. They can honestly just play for range here, Ghost, and they'll probably be all set to win out this round. And they also have marbles going on a rotation into pit. This is a damn near brilliant setup done by the attack. No, absolutely. And this is, again, as I had mentioned, uh, oh, night play. Here we go. Now, this this makes the whole thing even worse because there's, what, one flare on the uh, bridge over here. So this attack is going to be coming in almost completely invisible. And, of course, as I say, that power is just going to put back over. And here we go. Here comes the attack. Two defenders left here on the bridge. Make that one. Dylan, the last man standing. He's going to actually hide inside the smoke, which gives him a little bit of coverage. He's going to try and go for the bomb. He does get the defuser. Still kicking and fighting. Got enough health to make the magic happen. He's going to go after Foom, but no. Foom does bring the doom of Dylan. And, <clears throat> excuse me, the, again, I wanted to point this out. They didn't clear the windows, so as soon as the attackers came in, they were able to count. Okay, one, two, three. Three players are still up. We, we know exactly where all of them are. And so it just came down to making sure that they had the right execution and prep time to figure that out. And again, with like a minute and a half to go, they had almost an hour to think through it all. 
Yeah, and I think turning back on the lights was honestly just a gigantic bait against the defense. Because at that point, if you're going to go for a lights play, I feel like the defense is almost expecting more of a presence up into pit. They're like, oh, they've slowed down their attack. They're going for a rotate in a pit because they just hit the lights. Then they turn it back on. And then they weren't expecting as big of an emphasis on the top of observation. So right, right. if that is what Danger Duels were expecting, that was a pretty nice play overall. But even with lights on or off, I don't think it would have made much difference because all the attack had to do was just play for trades because it was a four versus three. And especially as an attacker, if you can play for trades, that almost almost guarantees you a round win put in the right hands. <clears throat> No, absolutely. And I think it really comes down to that early aggression that we had seen from yeah. the um, Danger Doodles team. They rolled in, and I mean, as soon as that barbed wire was cleared in observation, they just sent it. Now, thankfully, the you know that <laughs> Molotov was a little bit well timed, so it kind of di divided them. But once they got in, they didn't stop. They're like, check corner, dead man, check corner. Okay, one guy died, but we got him. It's fine. And literally just off of that initial early aggression, they were able to capitalize. And then again, they cleared observation. They had line of sight. They were good to go. It was killing time. And after that, you know, it was just it was just another day, you know, day what's the word, what's the phrase? Um day day on the job. Another day at the office. Day at the office, thank you. Another day at yeah. the office here for danger duels. They just rolled in and it was no problem yeah. for them. But Operation hey, what Lotus Scepter here back on uh, Kill House. And already mm -hmm. lockers uh, play instead of a club. So already kind of switching it up, playing more towards the bomb here, these uh, danger doodles. Again, a big emphasis here on reception. You always need to consider how far away reception is from the bomb itself. Now, it is across the entire map, mm -hmm. but this tile set in particular, it's a really small kill house in my personal opinion. So it's not that big of a deal. You only got to clear through a couple of rooms, and then you can just have someone watch the flank as well. So it's it's still beneficial. And we're going to have that red door play up in the clubhouse as well. Okay, there is no full yep. auto player that's incredibly aggressive at the moment. Maybe he'll rotate around when he hears the audible cue, but it's just going to be that mid AK player of Lobe just to at least place down that bar, maybe have a teammate back open a molly potentially. It looks like there's a bigger emphasis on the bomb itself, and that's where Jet with the full auto could really start to kick it up a notch. Yeah, no, I, I definitely like this this new decision. <clears throat> excuse me here from um, Danger Doodles to go for club. I was a bit worried because obviously with lockers you have all of this. You know, it's it's kill house. Basically, every wall is wall bangable. Um, and there's the clack. It looks like their players are going to go ahead and set up Jet. Definitely going to be sitting here in Kitchen. I don't really mind this, but I would like to see him a bit more, yeah, a bit more aggressive just because that auto shotgun, as the attacking team comes into Kitchen, it just makes it a little bit difficult, even if you get a pick, to try and get, you know, capitalize on that. Get another one, get another one, because, you know, once the auto shotgun starts going, you're pretty much having to hug the attackers to be able to get any real sort of damage done. Now, that's, of course, unless you're Chrome Trigger, who can make the auto shotgun work from, you know, half a, half a map away. But already, we've got three attackers here, two in lockers, one watching from outside Breezeway. Roach going to have an absolute mountain of a job here, as he's going to be the only person on site. The entire other, you know, the rest of the team is in officer club, not in position. Oh, man, this has been a huge oversight by the defense. The full auto will manage to go down as well. Foom will pick it back up instantly. It's just a heyday here for the attack. Foom will manage to trade against one. It's really not enough, though, for Lofteel to bring this one back. The defuse will be confirmed by a Daxi, and the entire defensive side will fall instantaneously. The play around in a breezeway worked wonders here for Danger Doodles as they go up 4-1. to one. You can see Roach even talking about it with this line that he drew here. He was like, guys, what happened? We were stacked up, you know, in this giant, <laughs> this, this wonderful office club kitchen setup, and then Jet probably would have done great, but I was watching Roach's camera as those flashbangs came in. That entire room became flashbanged. No one would have survived that. You know, it's not on Roach for trying to, you know, hold down, what, three different players or even Jet for being in the wrong position at that point. That room was gone. That, anyone in that room was dead, and as those attackers rolled in, there was really not much they could do. At that point, it would have been a conversation about how can they retake the site, and at that point, the guys coming through Clubhouse were like, hey, it's another day in the office. Let's make it happen, and they just started cleaning house. So, I mean, again, great just heads up play here by Danger Duels being, you know, I'm, I'm very, I'm always, I always love to see kind of the play style of each captain, you know, the, the flavor that they bring into due process. And this one-two punch that we've been seeing from Danger Duels has been absolutely phenomenal. First, it was setting up inside observation, giving them a second, then capitalizing on bomb. In this case, they pushed into reception. They opened up clubhouse, but then they actually flowed through breezeway. So again, these just, this, this timing that we're seeing from them is fantastic.
Yeah, understanding the weaknesses and the openings that they can take on their mm -hmm. attacks have been pretty much top-notch so far in this first half. So I'm hoping to see more of that, honestly, because it's been really working wonders for the Danger Doodles. They had a couple of issues on their defense, but it seems like they've been able to kind of sweep that under the rug as they were able to transition here. The sixth round, we're back on Factory, and it looks like we'll actually have a dock play, which I don't really hate, in all honesty. If you can get control of server, mm -hmm. you have potential to maybe cut off some of the angles near the top of office, and if you want to get frisky, you can actually go for some smoke plays, cut off some extra sight lines, and maybe go for an aggressive defuse. It's definitely possible, <laughs> but it is a huge risk. You always need to take that into consideration. Well, it wouldn't be a game of due process without a, without a little bit of risk, but I do agree. I think I like this this call here to go for power. It is kind of, besides Kill Dome, the most viable, because obviously the only other map is Kill House, which sadly doesn't have power unless you know, you're playing on the Halloween map. And while I don't particularly mind it, obviously you have this really nasty choke that you're going to be kind of flowing, trying to flow through. And as long as Merchant is moderately cognizant of the, the risk that he's at, as long as he plays back and then plays into either office and has Dylan support this other green, they should be okay. Now, of course, they're running the risk of the power play, and there is only one, I see two flares getting thrown, so there's all right visibility, but office is going to be playing off of that, that security light. Obviously, this green door is going to be extremely important to make sure that they don't allow the Saber to have any sort of vision. Merchant's going to go ahead and start putting a couple rounds down. adaxi has got himself a grenade, which is great. And that grenade does absolutely nothing because it bounced off the ceiling. And they're going to make their way through here with not too much. A little bit of utility gets used on both sides, and Merchant loses a bit of a mag, but not the end of the world. Power does get hit, and here we go. I'm assuming we're going to be seeing here the door charge get utilized as now all the defenders have been kind of drawn like moths to the flame on this boiler. Molotov, great response here. I believe that was from Loaf. And already these defenders are doing a great job of just kind of slowing down this assault. Yep, just falling back, knowing when they have to just peel away, and it's working wonders from so far. They get that first pick, Adaxi ends up falling here, but now you have dock control. That could be a bit of an issue here so far for the defense of Katura, but they've, again, just been able to fall back, and they realize that they have the man advantage, they don't need to do everything over the top. Loaf will finally fall, though. It's been a full confirmation here that dock is in the hands of the doodles. They just have to push back dock, of course. They need to get up into the railing, start getting aggressive, maybe trying to go for a flash play, or just utilizing the the fact that they have the better sight lines because the lights have been turned out. You also have Foom up top as well. That could maybe deny some pipe work play as well. Tile managed to find a couple of frags here in the background. Merchant will end up going to the wayside here. So it's a three versus three, but there isn't a lot of time left. They have to get aggressive to shut down these players inside of pipes, and it works. The tag team by Gravy and Foom will actually net them a pick, leaving just Jet alive here by themselves inside of server. Gravy will now have to fall back and end up going for that defense. And kicking. there isn't really much that Jet can do. Dylan gets on a wide swing potentially. No one's here to cover the plant, though. Gravy has no time left either. And the fallback, it was just more Woo! than enough. They really forced the hand of the doodles there, and they're actually able to net a second round here, Ghost, before we go into the second half. Jet was in, I have to say, the most opportune spot in <laughs> rest in peace. But I don't know if you, we got a, if you saw, I don't know if you had him on the uh, camera, but he was sitting in this, this absolutely banging green door angle where he had complete vision of bomb. And so all he really needed to do was just stay alive with the, with the mop. And we saw, I mean, as soon as someone touched the bomb, bam, gone instantly. And then Dylan in the rattiest of the rat, he was such a rat. We thought he was dead. And then of course, you know, one attacker came by and Dylan's like, oh, wait a minute, you're a bad guy. Da, 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 da. And then that was it. I mean, just in the best rat position to be able to go ahead and clear out. And then as you said, Katora is able to get the second round here on the board with absolutely beautiful, just kind of organic, I like to call it organic defense. They were kind of this kind of sandwich situation, so they backed off into Pipeworks, Jet kind of pulled himself into Server Farm, and then they they held Bomb from there, even though Danger Doodles actually had technical control over Bomb. I mean, that was such great heads up play. But here we are, it yeah. is C Store. We're gonna have Receiver or Ryan. Didn't get a chance to take a look at the other maps here, but of course, a classic, a classic of a map. We got this absolutely <clears throat> gorgeous tellers where you can, oh yeah, as long as you have a red door or a red uh, door breach, you can get yourself the button into shutters and then you can have this entire storefront completely open for you and your friends and potentially your big buddy Saber Boy. 
And uh, with a storage push, you can easily start to kind of secure a lot of this map. Now, of course, this does come onto the players or the attackers on how they want to play this. We're already seeing a potential power play here from Danger Doodles. So already kind of mixing it up a little bit for uh, our attacking team. I mean, I, I do like that idea, though, because if you get control of both Arcade and Freezer off the rip, you basically mm -hmm. get the whole bottom half of the map. And then that could possibly allow you just to go for some short range engagement gunfights. If there's no full auto on the board, mm -hmm. then that's even better for you as well. Then you can just go for a defuse. It's honestly even almost as straightforward as just going for that Teller's play. It, it does seem like an obvious idea of, oh, we should go Teller's, get shutters open, then we can have a guy just sit outside with the Saber. But there aren't a lot of sight lines here on this tile set where you can truly play with the Saber unless someone is sitting like all the way in the back, either here or here. But the defenders are probably going to be aware of that, so they're not going to want to risk that idea. So probably going for the Freezer and Arcade take is honestly a much better idea, and it's not an oversimplification here, so that will force the defenders to think extra hard here in the seventh round. Absolutely, and I, I'm i not sure if I agree with the Freezers, though. That's that's my only real reservation is it will work because they'll be able to get power, yeah. but in that case, they need to try and find a way to capitalize because if one side gets shut down, then the defenders will know all they got to do is just defend Freezers and you're completely shut down. Marbles and Adaxi have quite the challenge here on their side. Jet, again, going to be kind of out of position as well <clears throat> in terms of overall presence here for this initial opening, but so far, the slow sneak has worked. Most of the defenders haven't really been, you know, keeping tabs on this this freezer power does finally get hit there is i think one light and that is going to be the uh the teller's light here so already we've got kind of the the switch and the shuffle going as foom finally catches sinister as he was trying to get himself into a good position but of course arcade does get him caught off jet already starting to get smoked out and as you had said attackers they were able to secure at least the lower half of this map make that a little bit more than the lower half as they're working their way towards bomb defenders i mean you can see two of them trying to rotate but they're not even aware of daxi's here a daxi does get picked uh foom he's on the bomb there's only two players left they gotta get rid of him but at this point it's gonna be too little too late as we've got defenders just running every which way trying to figure out where the rest of the attackers are yeah that worked out honestly better than Danger Duels probably expected, to be honest. And that smoke play as well, it forced the defenders to basically run into their own demise because they couldn't just sit comfortably in the back of Tellers. They had to make a play, and they weren't given that opportunity, unfortunately. The flank was being watched relatively well. At least the comms were there. So we had a bit of a, a pivot by the remaining attackers mm -hmm. to notice, okay, we know where these last two defenders are coming from. Let's just play for the flank denial, and our teammate can continue to defuse the bomb. That was very well done overall and that was the big mm -hmm. issue with probably going for the red charge door at the very top is that you are again just kind of funneling yourself and choking yourself out at that point so giving yourself a lot of room on the map big net buff for danger doodles as they will continue to gain this lead up here in the first matchup five to two now absolutely no sorry i was kind of i'm staring at the i was staring at the stats here that uh, we're able to yeah. kind of now gleam into and um, yeah, you, I mean, you can just see it off of the, the, the damage overall. I mean, Danger Duels is just kind of netting a l just a little bit more. It's not a case of, like, you have one player that's going absolutely nuts, but, like, right off the bat, you got Gravy at 1,000, you got Adaxi at 800, you got Marbles at six, 618, Ty at 613, and let's just go ahead and look at, you know, the uh, Couture team. Merchant, the right now the highest damage player, 718. Dylan, 660. Jet, 537. Uh, Loaf, 439. Roach, 330. I mean, their best player is arguably third for Danger Doodles right now. I mean, that's just the overall yep. kind of confidence that we're seeing out of Danger or the overall gaming that we're seeing out of Danger Doodles. They're just hitting their shots better. They're rotating better. They're just doing everything. It's, and it's not like Couture is bad. They beat Yokuza, you know, in my opinion, probably the second best team uh, right before Global Breakout. They can do it. It's definitely possible for them. But I think we're just seeing now this, this kind of energy drain out of them as it's like okay we just need to get one more we need to get one more <clears throat> we're on bank now obsidian fang they need to play this well this is i won't say heavily defender favored but i've seen them pull some really crazy and creative stuff out of this map in particular where as long as they play it right they could definitely do it but it's going to come down to how well they can handle marbles on the saber foom with an igmar a daxi you know he's got himself a door charge and a flashbang ap 25s across for the rest of the team you know how are they going to be able to handle these guys as they work their way through bank 
I feel like the most direct option is probably the best here for doodles because yes. you almost need to get lobby control vaults literally right there and you have almost a direct access into accounting to hit the switch you just have to worry about the mop that's the make or break here for the defense if jet can pop off and land his shots that will keep a majority of the attack at bay but it appears that the doodles they're not going to have all their eggs in one basket they'll have ty and gravy go around in the vents to maybe cut off a couple of key areas of the map, maybe get control of security perhaps because Dylan is playing inside of there. They could also probably take down Merchant and also just apply more pressure into Tellers as well. That could force Jet back. The smoke will do that before the vent play even gets abrupted. So you have full control of lobby so early into the round. All you have to worry about at this point is accounting mm. and already Dylan will fall as well. This is a massive opening so far by Danger Doodles. If they're able to net another pick here in these next couple of seconds, it's almost completely over here for the defense dylan i mean we always talk oh great shot from jet making himself known but as soon as that flash that smoke came out dylan rotated into security wasn't there to try and support merchant for these uh these two guys pushing in through vents and jet just trying to get him get a good get into a good position i feel like he's kind of just struggling to find these players right now merchant being an absolute bastion though he has not stopped one but two different players jumping in from loans and has now completely shut down the eastern side of this push and again this is what i'm talking about jet needs to land this shot he doesn't Ooh. huge Boom, now he can do it. I've seen magical things happen from this man. They don't call him MF Doom for a reason. There's oh. one. Can he get the other one? He does. Oh. Absolute gamer. And that's what how I'm talking about. How do you get away with that? He's, he's Foom. It's just how it happens. Ones, I don't know how you have How do you explain it? The guy brings Doom that? and destruction, dude. Dude, how did I just get away with that, man? I killed four of them on the round. That's crazy. It's, God. It's just... He's Foom. It's just, it's again, it's just one of those things. MS we Foom. saw, we saw Ketura playing fantastic, absolutely wonderfully on that defense. Jet was trying to get through. He was actually struggling a little bit with his barbed wire here, but then it's like, all right, here, here comes Foom. What are you going to do? You know? So uh, how, how do you stop that? You know, how do you stop a guy from just absolutely clutching up like that? And I want to point this out, right? He went absolutely ballistic. He's currently tied with gravy in terms of kills. But he's actually third from the bottom. I mean, it's just insane. It's just this this danger doodle lineup. I mean, Couture was playing fantastic. The only real criticism I had, Dylan got caught out with trying to check for the smoke, and then he was kind of out of position for the um, the vents push. And then Jet, I respect the fact that he immediately jumped for rotating away from the smoke, but it left him a little bit exposed to the vents as he was rotating, and then he really didn't have a good angle afterwards. So again, danger doodles is just playing around Couture. Well, it's quite simple, Ghost, how you don't let Foom win that round, to be honest. It's, uh, you Nerf don't him. give him 1v1s in a 4 <laughs> versus 1. You don't do that. Fall back. You've been so great at that, Katura. You fall back naturally, organically, as you put mm -hmm. it earlier, Ghost, and you force him to hit the switch. He has... 40 to 30 seconds to play around, and that's pretty low time considering you're on bank. And again, 4v1. Just play with your team. Don't give him 1v1s. You know Foom's going to hit those. You know he'll clutch and go big. I, I really cannot fathom how hard of a throw we just saw by Katura there on that round. Maybe we'll see a redemption arc in match number <sighs> I don't two. Know. I, I really don't see one happening here yeah. because Danger Doodles, they are just, they're on top of their game. They're getting away with some nasty plays. And honestly, the mental, it is, if it wasn't chalked already, it's definitely chalked by now after that 4v1 choke. I don't know if it was a throw from Katura or again. Let's just let's just say the man's name one more time. Foom bringing the doom. I mean, the guy is just yeah. gaming. I, like at that point, Oof. what are you supposed to do? Like the the dust the dust was trying to settle. You still haven't really kind of consolidated as a team, and maybe that's the biggest issue that we've been seeing from Katura so far. Is just once the they're not really able to refocus once things have settled down. They're like, okay, um, let's try and you know we're on on kill dome for the first half of this. It's a three v four situation. Let's let's set up. Let's call. Let's communicate. Let's talk, and and then they just fall apart immediately. This is match point, mind you. I mean, we've only gone almost nine rounds here, and we were watching these guys. I don't want to say clean out Yakuza, at least when I was casting them yesterday. But Danger Doodles just making it look like another day in day in the office. I mean, here comes Beach. They're gonna. I mean, look at it. Look at this respect that we're seeing here from Katora. They didn't even try and play cheeky and maybe get a Beach pick. 
Two players are going to be trying to hold pit. They don't want to have give up power. Three players, though, are going to try and contest that. And already, Marbles in an absolute commanding presence here. He might even see... Oh, he's going to see one... Okay, no. He does tag Merchant just slightly, but he doesn't kill him. And we still have at least a somewhat defense here. But again, we have... Look at this control that is completely given to Marbles. These, this team is split. Yeah. One side it, has to take control. Oh, he, Dylan falls And Dylan over falls. It's just Merchant. One precise flash landed. That could be the complete end of Merchant. He has the full auto. So if they don't check or flash this corner, then this could actually be a huge play for He's him. He's going to go Chrome Trigger on him. They don't have to rip. Boom goes wide, and he'll actually fall to Merchant. In the background, we've got Ty fighting inside of OBS. Gravy will manage to get rid of that full auto player. So it's just this back half control. And so far, Marbles and Ty have been able to cut it off relatively well. 50 seconds remain. I believe that was a nade or yeah, not was, a yeah, stun a toss gone out. Ty rushes into oh. OBS, but falls to Jet. There is a bit of breathing room now opted oh, here for Katura. So but they only have medium to long range weaponry at this point. But so does the attack. They've got an Ingmar and a Saber. So it's just a poke and prod, essentially, <laughs> in these last 30 seconds. A Marble Top will oh, not my. land anywhere near God, the attack. The Gravy lands a stinker, and it's just Jet left alive. One versus two. He's got the mid AK, so he could potentially do this but he doesn't really have the best of sight lines against this bomb player unless he swings wide. But Gravy is not looking in the right direction. He'll lose that confrontation. It's a one-for-one -one trade, matter of fact. I'll have to eat my own words. Marbles doing a bit of a celebratory dance. He'll get the final round win necessary for Danger Doodles to end out the series 7-2, to but we still need one more map to see who can actually bring this one out. Four Absolutely. It's not done yet. We saw this uh, yesterday. Nope. Yakuza took the first round of Katura, Katura brought it back, and then they tied it on the third, and then went into overtime. So, they're not done yet. The biggest thing is going to be how they rally on these, these first couple matches. I We've seen it before where, you know, you could have a complete, like, three sweep on the first match. I mean, we, we see it all the time, Global Breakup versus Yakuza. You'll have three, then three, then three, and it's literally which of the defending or attacking team actually makes the mistake first. However, for this, and I, I really cannot state it enough, it's going to come down to can Katura rise and succeed? We saw it with, you know, <clears throat> I'm, Jet was able to, to cinch it right there, but Marble's having to go through, or Merchant, excuse me, having to go for that long rotate, literally giving himself, you know, exposing himself to the saber, and Marble's just, just <laughs> controlling the entire site. Now, I was a little bit confused be on, on that last engagement there because we had Marble's on the defuse who had the Saber, which is arguably a bit more powerful than the Igmar. The Igmar watching Jet, who had the KR, so, you know, it was, it was a little bit of a, a bit of a uh, scuffle at that point. They, they made it work. Hey, you know, they got the W. Who am, yeah. I, to, who am I to judge? Um, but, yeah, I, I, was, I was a little bit... As soon as we saw that, that split, two slash three defenders holding pit, and then two guys just trying to hold off bombs slash observation... Right then and there, Danger Doodles, in my opinion, had already won. They had split the defenders, and as soon as you split the yep. defenders, as long as you can consume one, that's it. Yeah, they literally chopped the map in half. But yep. with all that being said, we will go into a short little break, be back in a few short moments to get the second matchup up and ready to see if we'll have a bite back by Katura or if we, or if we will see another quick 2-0 and o fashion here on the stream. Don't go anywhere. All right, you guys are off. Clean... All right, uh, Mitchiff, uh, just move your cursor around, and I will see if I can see it. If I can see it, then it's uh, it's all right. You can just hide it. But um, can you move your cursor around in, in the game? I don't see it right now. So, Mitchiff, Mitchiff. muted. Oh, that's why. It's because the other mute on my microphone. I just figured it out, I think. Tell me if this works. <laughs> I hit capture, cursor, okay. Just move your you cursor on your game. Move your cursor yeah, on you your game. I, I am. You I don't see, see it. it. Yeah, I'm I don't see it. My player. All right, then it worked. Nice. Yeah, sick. All right. I couldn't awesome. find the capture source. That's why I hit you up. I just found it there. I was just on fucking mute. Yeah, I was uh, having trouble right. like moving the fucking map around without the cursor in the middle. Yeah, for the casters, um, I think I'm, what we're gonna do is just I'm gonna go straight to casters. You guys talk a little bit, and then I'll move to the <clears> stats <throat> again, and then I'll go back to casters, and then we'll go into the round. I think that's okay. a good flow, as I've noticed. But yeah, we'll do that. Stats are really good, actually. 
worked really well. Really good to see too. Yeah, stats look nice. Are they getting updated in real time? Everyone just yeah. saying GGs in the, in the fucking thing. Yikes. Anyway, they, Merchant <laughs> says they're queued. Merchant says they're queued. Okay. Yeah, Already it's, queued? It's, it's getting a I bit guess. rough for us. Uh, yeah, they didn't really want to break, but I could not get a response from Merchant for the longest time, so that's why I wasn't able to tell you guys if we're doing break or not. <laughs> but, no, that's fine, that's fine. I would assume okay. that they're probably taking like a 30 second break here because they're probably not feeling too hot right now. <clears throat> Just it, that last round, they they just looked like they were just kind of going through the the motions. Yeah. Like Merchant would have never fucking rotated. He knew Marbles was there. Yeah, I was a, that was a brutal game. Mm. <laughs> oh, just the defuse, who had the saber, which is arguably a bit more. Oh, we got the old stream rocking. Okay. Yeah, I set it up last night. Hopefully it nice. goes well. I also included that boxy clip that Chi posted on Twitter as well. But it's at the end, so we probably won't be able to see it. I was meaning to do it whenever I got the chance, so I just remembered to do it. And hopefully it goes well. Hopefully I get a good reaction. For what, sir? Uh, I've compiled a bunch of clips from yesterday, mm -hmm. put it in here, and then now I'm using it as a dead space canceller for the stream. Oh, so nice, people nice. can just watch it. Yeah, Katura's not uh, queued up yet. Excellent. Yeah, they said they needed a two minute break because Dylan had to piss, apparently. Oh, okay. I I need to add you guys to this cord. Uh, you, you guys even use it? I don't even know. <laughs> what's our? Add you to this coordination channel. Mm -hmm. If I add you guys to the coordination channel, or it doesn't matter. I'll just tell you what, what's out. To be honest. Do I have enough time to run and grab socks? Uh, sure. But sorry, yeah, I was like, time. I got dressed and I was like, oh, it's kind of cold in here. I want some socks, but I have no socks in close proximity. <clears throat> All right, we came in, we balling. Socks underscore acquired. At what cost? <clears throat> I don't feel nearly as fucking put up or put together as goddamn fellow though, looking like an absolute snack. Goddamn boy. I wore I wore a wrinkly flannel, yeah. Looks a lot better together. than the fucking undershirt. <laughs> I mean, I have an undershirt on. Dude, I'll unbutton up. You can see some of my undershirt. <laughs> man. You good. guys gotta start just wearing a so fucking... Just the top. You guys can wear, like, your underwear underneath. But the top, you gotta what? get a fucking caster's jacket. You gotta Excuse get a caster me, you're tie. implying that I'm wearing clothes on besides this shirt. <laughs> I'm wearing my... I'm I know wearing that my you're not wearing hand. anything besides the shirt. I'm wearing some socks now, though. God damn. <laughs> yeah. You got socks, nothing, caster's jacket, button-up shirt, and tie. But you gotta get like a big one from Goodwill that lately is oversized on Socks, you guys. Socks, shirt, caster's jacket, that's it. No pants, no nothing. That's, that's all you're getting. You're getting the yeah, upper half. Yeah, you stand up and you're wearing like barely like fitting underwear. Oh, God. Yeah, man. Oh, Jesus. Actually, yeah, one thing you could do, uh, GB or EK, is... Uh, Ask uh, captains to take highlight moments from each of their matches and then send them to you, so that way we can you can use it as like a B roll. Yeah, I mean that's what, I've been just collecting all the clips that's been made, but mm -hmm. if people want to, they can. That's what I'm saying. Like just make it want. easier to just that way you don't even have to like ask people to, or you don't have to go digging yourself. Just have captains that feel like their players popped off on something just to do that, you know. Mhm. Mm I will. I'll try and get that out if I can. Might be a bit easier uh, for you. They say they're cute. They say they're cute. Okay. Both of them said they're cute. Am I so, more centered? Because I noticed that in the webcam that uh, you had running, I was kind of off to the corner. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think it's just centered in the middle. But I'm going to move the casters in a bit. Uh, uh, so yeah, they're, they're cute. They're cute. They're in game already. Yeah. All right, I'm going to move the casters in five, 
Uh, fellow, you want to do entrance? Yeah, sure. All right. Two, one. Welcome back, everyone, to the Winter Major here. We have Kachura versus Danger Doodles here going into match number two. And as both teams are queuing, I feel like there is still a lot to talk about here from the last matchup. I feel like we could have seen a lot more on the side of Kachura, yet unfortunately it looked like they just had the first match shake. So hopefully they can remedy that going into this next series here. But Danger Doodles, they, they were just, just kind of going in, honestly, Ghost. What what do you even need to worry about as Danger Doodles going into this pause or this you know this couple minute break here between rounds? And I think the only answer know. is the only thing that they really got to worry about is just keeping that momentum and that hype. Um, I think on one hand it was a blessing for Katira because they got a chance to kind of at least break down what what might have been the issue, recovery. Like all right guys, let's just kind of roll into this one. Last game was last game. We've done this before. We've been in this position before. Let's just push it and get it. Um, but. Danger Doodles are just, they're just gaming right now, man. It's just another day. It's just another day. It's a Sunday for them, so they're just gaming. We're going to be on, I think it was the C-Store, was I saw between the... F yeah, Bank, C-Store, and Factory in the first Store, three. Bank, C-Store, and Factory. You got to love it. So already, and this is this is the one thing, the one little kind of mind game that I always like to see between teams is how they want to play this out. Bank, very large open map. Saber and Mop, pretty good option. But there's also a factory, so if you bring your mop or your saber to this map, you're also running the risk, depending on how the dust settles, that you could lose your your power play, your power weapon here, going into um, factory once you finally get there. And it could either be a free free win or an easy L, depending on how these guys you know play this map and how they things play out. Doesn't look like either team has really made that call just yet, though. Uh, just in, looks like a leg gross here for. The defenders and the auto shotty. Okay, so I like the idea of the auto shotty, especially with these close range kind of engagements that you can have in accounting, manager, and loans. That's definitely a good call. I like that. But I mean, like, look at this absolute gorgeous long haul that you got here for your defending and or attacking team. You sit one guy on either side of that. I mean, <clears throat> you know, if you're trying to push into accounting to get towards vault, you can't watch both angles. You have to you have to commit. So if you have one defender covering hall, one defender covering the you know the long side of tellers you're, you're set now of course button is sitting here in tellers which is actually kind of interesting because the blue door is facing lobby so our defending team or excuse me our attacking team yeah you can see it's gonna be a three two split um it would be very easy for them just to kind of roll into tellers get tellers and then with a double door here for vault you could easily kind of create this really nice sandwich depending on how your guys in the north do Hey, one thing I'm really looking out for here, it's Gravy with that full auto, man. He oh, is just yeah. in the rat corner. I was going to mention that. I saw the full auto being picked up by Gravy, and I was like, well, there's only two good places to play set him <laughs> up in. is either in the vault or in the corner next to Lobby. So this will be I critical. guess we figured out it was the latter option here. Now, this is great. Marvels is causing a great bait here by making them think, okay, there's only one guy in Lobby. Good Molotov to slow them down. Jet's not going to be completely focused on Marbles here. So even if he dies... Dylan, is he checked? No, he doesn't. He's going to wait. He gets one. Gravy could go big. No, he gets... Okay, they know he's there. Do they just throw a grenade and get rid of him, though? Or a flashbang to clear him out? Because, again, Marbles is still playing their support. Here comes one. and no. Oh, cleans him out. Oof, but Marbles is still alive, though. Able to find a refrag instantly. He's just huddling around the couches, essentially. But finally gets felled by Merchant. A Daxi instead of Tellers will get annihilated by Jet. Ty could potentially go for a swing but he'll fall back instead. Maybe we'll try to go and play for the vault itself, potentially. They also have a molly in hand along with the big AK. Boom holding down quite tightly inside of security Ooh. as well. A bit of a bout will go in between accounting and teller's room as Ty will now officially begin to question whether he should go in for the vault play and hope for the best or try to go around. They'll have to try to bout it out here with the long range confrontation. Gets rid of Jet. Flash gets popped out though. It'll force him back. Roach has control of the bomb, but Ty is not down up until now though. Merchant swings into action at just the right time and again there's plenty of time left to defuse so the first round will actually go the way of the attack i was a little bit worried because i saw the uh grenade icon from roach's uh player tag or you know the tag disappear and i was like did he just throw the grenade in the manager yeah he did oh okay and merchant's jumping in right now oh okay okay oh god <laughs> it's like okay no he's still alive a huge chip damage on him but he still makes it Saber's going to be picked up. I don't know if they want to try and go shopping for that auto shoddy. I'd be very curious. I'm a little bit curious by this play by Foom. I mean, the, the, the security doors are always a fickle mistress because if you don't have them set up in the right way, you're basically giving yourself to either the attacker side or you'll be able to you know escape into the defenders. And I think 
he went into <clears throat> the tellers and then the attackers managed to actually swing in before he was able to rotate and so he got kind of given to the uh, attacking team and he's like all right well i guess this is my life now and just kind of fell over but uh <laughs> Great heads up play by Gravy. I liked, I mean, honestly, I think out of all the positions, C Store, ah, Auto Shot, he could have worked, but I think in that bank little rat spot was probably the best call for it. Yeah, the only thing I didn't like is probably how trigger happy Gravy got because I mm -hmm. don't think. If he would have waited, oh, he could have gotten fully a double easy. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Patience is a virtue there. So him jumping the gun, it kind of sold himself out a bit too early there. Mm -hmm. That full auto play could have really worked wonders. And then Marble and Gravy would have just. Had entrance control and lobby control throughout the entire round, most likely. But going into Seas Store now, we're not going to have that full auto in play, obviously. And I think we didn't have the mop in play, so it could be utilized here if you Correct. were trying to deny shutters. So that's going to be a point of contention. But you could obviously save it for Factory as well, as that is one of the biggest maps and probably one of the best maps for a mop. Well, it is Operation Fox Praetorian, a very lovely, lovely well-described name. Um, and yeah, I don't think we'll be seeing the mop here from the defending team. I think they're going to be wanting to save it for Factory. Frankly, this map is a bit of a, I don't want to say it's a bit of a mess, but trying to get a good long angle here for the defenders. The best ones you're going to have here is like the storage play, which even then is kind of a bit rough. You've got this super, you know, you got this super duper long angle here that you could have. But frankly, if you get a wall charge and then you have your saber guy watching it, I mean, that again... Mop has only one shot that can fire. Saber's got multiple. It's just kind of it's it that, that's a that's a very dangerous dance. And then again, you know, you want to sit. Sometimes you might even see like you could if they still had the auto shot, you could sit them and have them swing bathrooms. But there's not really a lot of space for a mop to really be utilized here. So I I do agree. I think it was the best call for them to go ahead and save it for the uh, factory. And already you can see a lot of close range KR A two U's Nax. You've got Groobers and even the unsilenced Groober on tie. I think this is probably the best loadout that these guys could have brought here for C Store. And uh, even a two, mol two Molotovs and no flares. So if they do decide to go power, then we'll have to be careful. Yeah, it looks like we're going to have a pretty decent emphasis zone trying to stop power. I mean, Adaxi's playing mm -hmm. close inside of storage. You've got Foom just all the way in the back, hoping no one detects him inside of Freezer. So. As long as a wall charge doesn't get used to open up those fence gates, which it won't be, it's going to be dead oh, in the back of oh, oh, the shutters, and that's going to be completely fine. Jet will get the first blood off the round. I will follow a great shot, in all honesty. So, that's a pretty huge net buff. A crossfire is established, though, by Gravy and Adaxi, both rock and knacks of their own. Trying to make sure Merchant cannot get inside the building without losing a lot of their HP. Mm. They'll get tagged slightly and know it's far too much danger for them to walk in towards that direction. So, he'll go for a fallback and potentially join the rest of his team. It's a dive bomb inside a freezer. Jet will Marbles. annihilate Marbles there with the saber. And Foom will fall, as there's just far too much on his plate for him to chew off. They'll end up choking out in that position. And now Adaxi has to get aggressive, essentially, in the background against Merchant but they just dance around each other <laughs> like two ships the in the night grenade. a Daxi and gravy now both have to go all the way around in tellers to stop this oh, diffuse this there's the just worst far too much manpower on the board at this point Ooh. dylan may fall by a Daxi, but it honestly probably won't be enough here it's a, a Daxi against merchant a Daxi with a mad dash he's allowed one freebie but now roach is holding the cutoff so at this point i'm really hoping a Daxi can't win this and he will not but man did he make it close? <laughs> like two ships passing in the night. You know, that was adorable. Merchant and, and Adaxi just kind of give the gamer a high five and say, no, it's okay, we won't kill each other as they, they go about their business. Uh, but yep. I just got to say, I mean, as soon as that wall charge got opened and then Jet found Ty, I was like, oh, oh boy, here we go. And for a little bit there, I was actually quite impressed. The defenders were holding this very nice kind of like oval shape of the defense. They kind of had lost a little bit of the, the uh, northeastern. They obviously lost the southwest, but they did a great job at just kind of holding and just trusting each other in that sense because there it was almost like a bunch of 1v1v1s. Foom was by himself. Um, I think it was Marbles who threw a great Molotov and then Jet came... Jet came towards him in by the, uh, they played this like ring around the Rosies thing. And then Marbles, or yeah, Marbles tried to back off into the bathroom, sadly, instead of trying to contest Jet. And sadly, he got picked there, but it was a bunch of like these, these very kind of one-off situations, which for a while it was actually working out. And then as the, the, the wolf pack of, you know, Team Katora came in and just dominated the, the central area of uh, Storefront. Shoutouts to Jet for hitting 420 damage. Now that's epic. And the rest of the team also getting themselves some sweet 200s. You gotta love it. 
But uh, Team Katora doing a great job at showing up here for this uh, this first two rounds, mind you. And again, as I had said, the, the first couple rounds, it's going to be about rebuilding that confidence, getting that energy and that momentum. Yeah. Even if they lose one or two on their defense, that's okay. As long as they, they start feeling themselves in that, that again, that, that drive as they have to go. Not one. They have to win this one just to tie. They're going to have to do it twice. Yeah, everything really matters for them at this point. And they've already gained as many rounds as they did in the entire last series. So that's honestly pretty big. Hey, for it's in that so win, far. baby. <laughs> Can yep, only go up. There we go. At least we technically broke even already for the attack. <laughs> Moving back on a factory, though, we'll definitely see that mop and play. I don't know why you wouldn't want to bring it out here. Right, yeah, Marvel's absolutely. Going for the, the proper play. There was a whole process of wanting to save it up until now, of course. So You can almost say it was really a wondering. Process. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sorry. Shout out to Saber Shark for that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Operation Chrono Circus, though, it's going to be a factory. Power up here in the corner. Again, this is usually I always love to see how players kind of play this area over here. And the reason with that is you need to you need to defend power because we haven't seen them push power. So the logic is they haven't gone for power yet. They're probably going to go for power here. So oh my god, look at this three stack here in server. It's going to be oh mop god. tags one, and then you've got the firing squad to try and catch another one. Easy. Pickford for a Daxi gets Jet, and that's huge. That's your saber gone for this entire map. Oh my Christ! And well, they they knew you could see. Up. Look how far jet, far away Jet is. They didn't. That's even... such a long distance. No, that mop really doing damage here. But Marbles definitely had to pay a pretty heavy price. He is but one he's shot alive away from meeting the same fate. Essentially, he's still alive though. Yeah, so. That's still huge overall for the defense of the Doodles. So Molly gets tossed on out. That's going to waste some time. A rotate will have to go through. I mean, server farm has not been in control yet. They've got to just blitz creep oh, into Doc. Virgin so hard gets by the first tie. pick, though. That's big. Gravy able to fend off for the time being, but has to fall back inside the actual cargo storage itself, but lands a nice shot onto Dylan. And the back just gunning. Merchant picking up a couple of frags, though. He's going big in the background of walkway. That's a ton of damage being dealt here. And he's able to get rid Ace? of Gravy as well Ace? with the AK. Oh. He's unstoppable for the time being. Boom will finally punish him for his wrongdoings. But he's across the map at this point. It's only a matter of time before we see that diffuser being ticked down. But there's a minute left on the board. And in this instance, Kachura, they just want to confirm this kill and seal the deal here to make it a quick 3-0 and in this first set. But Boom, he's just playing back in passive. Near off, essentially, he's just in the far back area of the boiler room, essentially. Just trying to pivot around that natural cover. Diffuse now being ticked down. He's got to win that gunfight against Lope, essentially. Either that or stop the plant with this incredibly long angle but roach is just baiting this one oh, out perfectly he and he's them. even able to pick up the mop shot as well onto foom plenty of time left once again to get that diffuse down and it's Three just a piece. bloodbath on factory i i was i was absolutely terrified from that initial jet pick because that's the kind of thing I've, I've learned, I've learned the hard way. If you don't throw a safety smoke, you're going to pay for it. And in this case, they did, but they made it work. After that, I would I would comfortably say yeah. that that whiff from Ty with the Molotov just allowed them to swing in and absolutely dominate the docks. And then Merchant, I saw this yesterday when he clutched up in, in C store where he got one, not one, not two, not three, but four. He four pieced him. And we were screaming about the ace there as well. Merchant woke up, said hi. It's time, to, you know, it's rise and shine time. And so close from that ace, so close, but thankfully his team was there to round it out for him. Yeah, Merchant just going nuky there in that last round. And we go back here to the old bank tile set when we saw a little while ago. Sides finally switched on out. So Gatura will now have to try to carry on that momentum here <laughs> into their defense now. But I honestly, love the danger are, warning. <laughs> Yep, be careful, guys. They might. Uh, they might they do might that. I don't know why that. they might have that that hunch, but I do appreciate that they're you know already calling out the the risk. Hmm. <laughs> Love I it. wonder. So, all right, Operation uh, Certain Malice. Uh, again, we're going to be on bank here. And already we're seeing actually a fairly similar setup here. You can see the attackers talking about loans, talking about entrance. I, I like this. I mean, frankly, it's going to allow them to go from west to east. They know anything behind them is clear. Anything in front of them is at risk. And it allows their team to kind of work and communicate. Now, the question, and obviously I don't think that this is the most optimal strat, is how do they want to try and handle this these tellers? Now, obviously they need to get some control over it. And I frankly don't think that there's going to be much risk if they try and do anything, but do we see any sort of power weapons here from the defending team? That's going to be the real big 
call. I would love to see maybe an auto shoddy. I don't think mop is really the best call here. I think, again, it would be best to save for factory, but hey, we've seen, again, we've seen crazier things happen from these guys. We saw the mop firing squad in factory. There's a reason why those guys do that. It works, you know? And let's see. Okay, so it looks like it's going to be fairly close range stuff. So yeah, a lot of the defenders probably going to be sitting accounting, manager, security, and vault. They don't even want to try these, these long, dangerous hallways. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't blame them. Even if you let Lobby, you know, get in the hands of the attack, I mean, there's still a oh, lot they have one. to trudge through. I'm pretty positive, though, that at least a couple of players want to go around into Vent, most likely, and then also still that door charge into Lobby, so this is not a horrible idea. The Vault door gets opened, and that actually allows for some Bardu placed and Merchant to just kind of vibe inside a Vault. Oh, Ooh, he barely gets back yo, out. Yo, my man Tokyo drifted through that door. <laughs> yeah, he just, he just made the mad dash, and it barely worked out for him, but at least he will not be a sitting duck until the Vault gets re-hit. So we've got three here in the vault, or for the vault, excuse me, in loans. I was a little bit worried about Dylan because he was going to try and play in this really aggressive rat spot in loans, but thankfully he, he kind of backed off, which I, I like that call because he played a lot more cautiously and con uh, conservatively. Uh, hey, Danger Doodles, you guys want to come in? Okay, there we go. Now, now they're starting to kind of work their way in very cautious. They, they're looking. They're looking for something cheeky to happen here because of the cheese that they just pulled off on factory. They're kind of almost half expecting a retaliation meme strat, if you will. But so far, so good. And it looks like our team, I don't know if... Yeah, okay, they did breach through entrance. They're just playing super cautious here. They have no idea where these defenders are. The good news is they've cleared hall. They cleared. They didn't clear a bathroom, but no one's in there. Lobby has been cleared. So now there's only a few other areas. And right off the bat, there's Ty falling again. Ty needs to kind of show up for his team here. I'm a little bit worried he's not landing the shots that he needs. But so far, this attacking team has confidently kind of consolidated the defenders into manager or accounting. And now they're just waiting I for mean, the vault yeah. retake. Yeah, this is just a brilliant hold so far by Katura. They are forcing the hand of the doodle so far. Flash pops in through. You're trying to get control of accounting here. Gravy will get that first one, make it a 2K. Oh, this actually is a huge breath of fresh air so far as the switch will now get hit. Gravy falls, though. They've reclaimed control of accounting, but now they have to worry about the vault itself. They've got that long angle to potentially creep their way in through, but they don't want to overcommit until that diffuser starts oh, getting great taken smoke. down. But there goes a the smoke. You can now possibly just pivot around the, the demon. The Molotov. No, they fall through the smoke it's just foom left alive one versus three situation here we'll try to spray late. through the gas but can't do it he's not able to land enough shots to confirm a frag here and there's no time left either what a recovery there by the defense they had a strong start and an even better finish to keep a majority of their players alive and win out a fourth round in a row two key things there from the danger doodles first thing they took so long to get there. I mean, it was like, all right, guys, you cleared loans. Go. Just get in there. I mean, even if it's just throw a flash, try and clear the halls and get something going. They just took so yep. long to get going. And then finally, once they got in, it was like, okay, now, you know, credit where credit's due. Katura had three guys staring at the vault that were ready for that thing to get hit and ready to have this, like, Wild West gunfight, which never happened. And actually, oh, goodness, my, my webcam. Um, oh, God. The, um, they, had, they had two guys watching vault. Three to watch the accounting, which, you know, it's turned into this, this, this bloodbath where, like you said, I mean, they didn't really get in there like they needed to. And then another key thing, Foom did recover the saber, so they did not lose their power weapon here as they go into C-Store, which is a big deal. I mean, again, I was and when we were talking about this the first time, if you risk losing your saber on your first round, you're not going to have it in the third when you need it for factory. And that, that again, we're talking about the, the, you know, the server farms firing squad that uh, we saw in the first round there, or the, the third round there. That's a lot of risk. That is a lot of risk to take, but uh, we didn't see that, thankfully. So here we are. We're on uh, Operation Fox Praetorian again. The teams have switched. We're going to have uh, Team Danger Doodles pushing in against Team Katora, who, mind you, are currently up 4-0 against their adversaries, who they lost 7-2 comma two um against them in the the first set here so again an absolute reversal sweep i mean i think we were looking you know you and uh fellow you were talking about in the chat when we were watching you know after the end there some players were just saying gg it's like it's already over like you know danger doodles are just making a mockery of katora but katora showing themselves there they're they're making their presence known finally after what was that like almost nine or ten rounds of just kind of getting kicked up and down yeah. the street 
Yeah, it was a nine round series for the first match, and then immediately out of the gate of match two, it just appeared Katura completely changed their entire playstyle and mm -hmm. really just got comfortable against their opponents. Despite the fact they did not have a lot of time to, you know, go into a break, you know, calm their nerves down, mm -hmm. they didn't really seem to care. They felt quite comfortable underneath all this pressure, and now it's uh, basically against Danger Doodles to not get reverse sweep. Now the pressure's back on them, and we saw during the plan phase what kind of attack they're opting to go for. They want to just get down to this line. a wall yeah. charge. Yep, they want to just rush in and try to get that bomb control like it. as quickly as humanly possible. I'm a big fan of it as well because there isn't a big emphasis here in denying the office push they've got that default crossfire with both jet and loaf but they're already starting to figure out they want to fall back or not and i really don't Look think they understand what's about to happen because of that wall charge i don't think they were anticipating this and this is honestly going to be a huge round so long as the attack can make this work but dylan gets two freebies essentially jet's there to back up as well there goes the explosion but it's far too late as the defenders have plenty of time to recover from this merchant with the rotate this is just a bloodbath and side of tellers and the flank by merchant will get the last one a foom the plan it looked great on paper but the execution was flawed in so many ways it's five to oh now for katura nothing has been stopping them so far on this second match you can see the katura betters in the chat just rubbing their hands going oh baby i can't wait to get me some points man that was just they took too long. They took so yeah, long on their, their breach. As soon as one of the defenders went, okay, hang on. One, two, three, four. Okay, you're all coming through here. Boys, we got to get ready for this. I was a little bit worried there with having three defenders in tellers. They're like, okay, we got uh, we to gotta do some movement. We got to figure out how we're going to get this doing. They finally got themselves going. They finally got some movement going, which is good. Um, but they just took... They took so long that wall charge it finally happened yeah. great but unless you are just conga lining yourself in there you're getting all five of the guys in there they're gonna be ready i mean a wall charge is effectively either an absolute boon in your assault or a murder hole i mean it is a glorified door so it can also be a funnel and in this case the entire attacking team opted they had like one maybe two guys go through the funnel which was fine but then they all tried to go into tellers which is an even worse funnel because now it's a long hallway. You got defenders easily able to turn that into a, you know, like you said, a bloodbath, and they paid for it. Um, Dylan, he's got a clacker now. That's a great little power play. You God. you sit Dylan bottom of docks. That entire play is stopped. Now you can park your guys either in office, server farm. You're good to go. Yeah, and I think there is still yeah, there's one charge available because they used Correct. one on bank to get main correct and then they used one last round of the wall charge they have a door charge left so yes they're probably gonna want to go for a lights play i would assume that's like a super direct take here that could honestly be gigantic but it won't work they got dylan with the clacker every time dylan yep. clicks the clickety clacks that clacker lacquer you sit him right here this door becomes a threat now yep. now just trying to get into the building is dangerous let alone the people trying to shoot you yeah, exactly. Oh, you can see Marvel's talking about the, the the risk. I love it. Oh, I love it. Oh man, there's there's the safety smoke. Okay, there it is. Little do they know what what the real issue is here. It's that that little button. Just wait for it to detonate. Oh and yeah. Someone dies. No door. No door charge used. It's gonna be a five man conga oh. line through servers. And look at this respect. The safety smoke. Good. I I even if there isn't anyone there, they've got four of them. I think I think we've seen maybe two of them utilized so far. I do always just safety smoke. It's such a good call, especially when you're you know terrified of something like this happening. Now where is our mop? Jet with the mop watching green actually in walkway on the lower side so not in a very aggressive position playing very passive to support his team i mean i feel like atura we've kind of witnessed them just be more comfortable when they go for fallback plays mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. allowing some early map control they don't really seem to care that much because they can hold these key angles unfortunately for roach his position is not good enough to actually win their fight against ty so that'll be the first pick here for doodles that's a great pick but they need merchant to make sure they're the aware world. of the rest of the defender's position so far they spot out merchant early on because they'll try to go for a pre-fire here oh, but he gets gravy, gravy loses that fight merchant somehow remains alive not for that much longer though ty is quick on the draw that's their second kill adaxi to the green door will get rid of dylan and now it's a two on three here Favorite 
outnumbering the attacking side for once, and they've got lights control. That's great. They've burned through Amali as well, still a minute to play. They could honestly try to go for a full rotation, maybe go up into the walkways and try to spot out Jet, perhaps, as there aren't many angles that can be held by the defense that comfortably without mm -hmm. receiving a lot of pressure here by oh, the attack the there goes the flashbang loaf is completely blinded here but the aggression it's not fast enough the gunfire could he be gets tied one fight is now lost foom just basically baited tie oh. but it still works out oh. and jet can't do a damn thing by themselves oh. in the back of cargo so it's gonna be the first round here finally on the board for danger doodles it took them five heaping rounds but they finally did it I was I was absolutely terrified when I saw Jet had the angle on marbles. I was like, oh my god, he's going to do it. He's going to murder marbles. We're going to go into a 1v1 situation. And then poor Foom has an absolute, yep. you know, the world on his shoulders. But they clutched it out. They didn't use the grenade. I was so worried because I saw as soon as marbles got... <laughs> or excuse me, Merchant got hard flash. I just want to point this out, how absolutely miserable it is to try and fight someone who is also on either equal levels of skill or better. When you're hard flash, not only is your entire screen white, your, your gun shifts like a mother and you go, you know, across the room. And then on top of that, you've got the entire team collapsing on you because, again, Merchant was left alone. He was in a 1v4 situation. And not only that, he traded even. He got Ty, and so he actually was able to drag that out. So again, this Couture team is fighting for every single round, and they are able to do it. I'm, I'm just so impressed to see this recovery from them. Again, Merchant, let's take a look at the stats here for just 30 seconds. Merchant going huge, 963 damage. Jet going huge, 946. Roach going huge, 660. Loaf going huge, 520. And Dylan, 351. Gravy, he's got 810, so where does he stack? Again, third. Their best player on do da Danger Doodles in terms of damage alone is third compared to Couture right now. Yeah, okay. it has uh, not been the best for Doodles so far. Again, uh, I'm, I'm a little agitated that Foom went shit kill baited his teammate, but you know what? They won the round, so that that's okay. They they it got happens. their round on the board. They didn't get 7-0 by Katura, so that's okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll live we'll live to fight another day potentially uh, it's okay but house. i mean still 7-1 versus 7-0 i mean it doesn't really yeah, matter because at the end yeah difference. it's you bloodied them hey you you at least you bloodied them but i mean here we go c store or c store goodness gracious kill house operation sinister fang you wanted a bigger map we got a whole lumber yard now for some extra space and I mean, it doesn't even look like they're interested in playing it, which, frankly, I, I completely agree. You got lockers. You can push in. Yeah. The biggest thing, I think, is going to be this little, like, gun skirmish here in patio. Um, we do have the auto shoddy, which I completely agree with. I like, I mean, again, in office, it's an absolute cluster truck. In club, cluster truck. You've got all these absolutely, like, tiny little angles. And you've got this nice little ramp here, which, if your auto shoddy is playing smart enough, he can actually kind of bleed a little bit of damage here in the halls, back off, rotate, and then even potentially get himself into an advantageous position in either office or support kitchen. So really clean stuff that uh, Jet can play here. Now, I like the defense. Okay, there's, again, safety smoke. You can see, okay, they know at least one guy's watching the window. Oh, they actually get Ty. I think Ty got a couple rounds on the shoulder there. So right off the bat, again, I like this play from, from Danger Doodles. They're playing defensive as they're trying to play aggressive, which is a very difficult thing to do when you need to be the one that takes the action. Yeah, taking the charge here. Lockers will be the first point of action so far for the Doodles. No one tuned about them just yet. A couple wall bangs here and there. Nothing too much being done so far, though. An explosion will ring off near the green doorway. They're just kind of trapped inside of lockers for now. Unless they get some kind of wall bang pick, they are kind of just sitting in their own grave here. And there it goes. Boom gets the first one. Roach will go down. Merchant is here to take a spot, though. And you've got Jet to worry about, of course. Up close and personal with that full auto. This could be this devastating. He finds one, one. two. He around for a second. He gets it. Boom will finally shut him down. But the damage, of course, Ghost, it's already been done. Adaxi will fall outside of the map itself. Boom, making the mad dash here with the full auto trying to make ends meet he needs to get back up from marbles here in this position or this could easily be match point and marbles will win a critical gunfight oh, against merchant fool. and there goes the full auto dylan will go down it's just low he could maybe go for a wall bank potentially but look at how well marbles is oh. playing around the bomb chassis Boom, with the last one, with the full auto. We'll see a second round here for Doodles as they're not done yet in this second match. You can't spell Doom without Foom. Oh, man. And what's wild is he picked up the auto shoddy 
you know, paid for in blood by his team. And then again, like I said, he went for this this little rotate, which Merchant fell on, I think it was a wall bang, but then Dylan wasn't ready for it. They, he was like, oh, you can come behind me? Oh, 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 oh no, that's not good. <laughs> and then poor, poor Lope was having this like gun trade with the Daxi for most of that match, and he was like, I did it, boys! I can Wait, you're all dead. Oh man, like what am I gonna do? And then you know, trying to trying to push in against an auto shotty has got to be the worst feeling in the world when you know he's got an auto shotty. When you know you've got to go through these tiny little angles. I mean, that's that's just that just sucks. So great. I mean, again, great play by Foom. Great, you know, uh, awareness to utilize that and just kind of play like this aggressive shark. You know, swimming through each of these these little angles and holes to kind of get himself into. So. Good heads up play, and here we go. Operation Thrust Release. So once you stab your opponents, you release, and you let them fall to the ground because they are dead. So here we go. Kill Dome. Yeah, this is a very open Kill Dome as well. Oh, I mama, think... Yes. Uh, I feel like you can't just all funnel into beach here. You've got to get one of the red doors opened up here, and then you can kind of, like, re-rally yourself. So either go up to Ruins or Pit. Mm-hmm. Lights probably wouldn't be that phenomenal here, in all honesty, unless you're like just unless you're clean with it at that point. So, going near the back part of ruins, mm -hmm. that's probably not a bad idea because you can get a lot of map control early on from there. It's right next to the bomb. You would probably just need to worry about someone maybe kind of vibing near either the logs area, the top of observation, or maybe even in swamp or someone near the bridge towards swamp in case they swing out wide near pit. But that all depends on the defender position itself and if they're able to read into how you want to attack here. I was going to say, so it it, de it, it, it de entirely depends on how these attackers want to roll in here. With with the auto shot, yeah. yes, I completely agree. Uh, they should definitely go for the, again, this is a very open-ended, at least on this section of, of Kill Dome, very open-ended. They've got a lot of space that they have to try and close, which... Auto shoddy isn't going to capitalize on, but you get your auto shoddy here into observation. Oh yeah, no, that's 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 a good day right there for the auto shoddy. Um, what I what I tend to see, at least, and I'm not going to say that this is the 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 gamer strat meta, is you you normally want to have five beach because as long as you again at the end of the day you got to just defuse the bomb. That's the objective. You hold yep. jungle. You hold usually there's going to be like a mop player sitting around here, and then you hold maybe the one guy that's going to be hiding either in logs or by this red door. Once you've gotten that you're pretty much clear. It doesn't matter who's sitting and watching Pit. But again, Roach already trying to get in here and be aggressive, but Roach is extremely away from his team. And Jet's not even watch. I mean, Jet's watching Red. He's not able to support, Mar you know, Roach from this position. D <laughs> uh, Dylan, hello. Help, though. He gets the first two off the bat. Almost all that ruins play is now forfeit. Oh, Roach gets marbles? Whether he wants to fall back or not, it is just a sea of red <laughs> tie. The last alive wondering what just happened to my entire team what do i do here in a one versus three wow. as he gets one he's got some assists though from jet he team killed dylan but 1v3 and everyone's just sitting in the back of the map they've got long range capability it's not uh -oh, looking jet's too got him sighted for ty Oof, big tag a uh, little bit i would love to know why jet decided to try and murder uh dylan on that maybe he just started popping off too hard and he was like no these are mine but <laughs> Calm down, uh, Dylan. Merchant gets the clacker. Here we go again. Match point is where we're going to be heading into. And you can already see, this is this is why I'm, I'm not a big fan of this. Because, again, one barbed wire, and as we saw on that match, just completely shut down. And then all you got to do is just hold down the angle and ta-ta-ta-ta. That's it. You're done. So very well played uh, defensively by Team uh, Katora. Danger Doodles, they're just not feeling this, this set. And frankly, I think what they probably want to do at this point is just, hey... It's six two. We can go in for either. At this point, it's it's anyone's match. And I mean, Jet going huge, Merchant huge. Let's take a look. I always like to look to look at the opening duels because those those can also be really key. And Dylan again, three of his four in opening engagements. Meaning, as soon as he saw someone and started to shoot them, he won three out of those four trades. So I mean, that's just that that is phenomenal. That is absolutely huge. Tie. You know, I've been seeing the guy's name pop up, but it's usually been on the losing side of the kill feed. So I, I'm very concerned that the Danger Doodles team just needs to kind of... Maybe it's a bit more organization. Maybe they just kind of felt way too confident rolling into this. And after they lost those first couple, they just kind of lost the, the steam needed to just kind of finish out these matches. So I'm, I'm very worried for Danger Duels. I mean, obviously they're on match point, but if they don't correct whatever it is that their communication is, is lacking right now, they are going to go into that third match or that third set 
not only defeated after what is going to be an extremely clean reversal. I mean, first it was seven, it's, well, it's six, two right now, but you know, seven, two, one. Now it's two, seven against them. That's, that's tough. I mean, it's just a lot of hard stalling yeah. by danger doodles. Honesty. That's just been their biggest issue. Their plan doesn't go to fruition and they just, they don't know what to do. They yeah. don't have a fallback option. They just were like, all right, let's stick with plan A and hope for the best. Up, oh, it backfired. Well, now we don't know what to do. There was an example where Foom, of course, was able to like make some magic Pop, happen. Just be Foom, right? yeah, with, yeah. With the full auto. Yeah, but that's just, that. that's the Foom, that's the Foom law. That kind of is just an enigma. <laughs> Foom's law. Really, yeah, you should not rely on that almost every single round. However, he might have a big part to play here because he has that full auto. So if he's able to get some close quarter engagements, mm -hmm. it could work out. But again, relying on the Foom's law, that's not your golden ticket to success. Well, it's what's gotten uh, Danger Doodles here at least into the... Well, actually, I don't want to say the loser's bracket because I don't want to say that. That's, that's probably not a, a big boon for them. But um, <laughs> Oh, hang on a second. I thought that they... they I thought it was Merchant picked up a, a clacker from last round. Maybe I'm going insane, but I, for some reason I recall them picking up a, a clacker to, to utilize, but either way, 4-1 uh, four, four, split. Marble's going to be opening up manager here, maybe to apply a little bit of pressure, but look at this. Again, that stall. As you said, and you were completely right about it, fellow, they're, they're just taking so long. We saw this last time with the other bank. Go! We know where they are, and it's not in, you know, not in loans. Just start pushing. They're playing so passively. But it, it's going to take them 30 seconds just to get to the in-between here on bank. It's so slow. They're playing, I mean, they're playing right. They're playing passive. They're playing, you know, confident in they're going to secure security. Great. There's the entire rest of the map, though, you got to capture. Yep, at least they'll get the switch that's great they've already burnt through oh, a lot of time though shit. jet gets the first pick as well through the tarp i guess you'd want to call it the plastic paneling i suppose near yep, the metal TSA. detector so that's good yeah through the metal detector i guess well that's what i'll have to probably call it. the rest was a bit of a word jamble there but that's, that's right, still that's a right. huge net buff down goes gravy so you still have to funnel in through hallway as well because you don't have main control and then you go into tellers. This is just going to be a huge kerfuffle. Nice. And now you've got Merchant playing inside of Vault as well. This is... Unless it's just not looking great. huge, it's already over. Yeah. It, it's the Foom's Law. It's what we talked about That's here. True. They're relying heavily on how well Foom can play here. Here comes Marbles. Marbles swings Marbles. into action. And he's just dive bombing into them. And somehow gets two. This should be easy pickings for Foom. As Dylan is just staring into his soul. And Merchant is the only one left to try to make this one happen here. There's apparently another seconds. defender left somewhere. Oh, he's on the bomb chassis, of course. The bomb indicator was just hiding yep. it from me. And they'll win it out. They just had two nice angles lined up in the back of Vault. The play worked out really well when Marble stepped in, but that that was literally it. That was the only thing that went well for the attack, and then they still had to worry about the Vault. Too, lo too long. They just took way too yeah. long to get in there. Fine. I mean, Again. had they maybe an extra 30 seconds, even that... To just go, okay, what, where's our utility at? Because I've I learned this the hard way when playing against Global Breakout. Two flashbangs minimum to clear out Vault. If you don't have that, someone somewhere is going to be sitting in this absolutely disgusting rat position, and you're going to die for it. And, yep. well, that's, the, you know, they didn't have any utility. There was a Molotov that, that slowed them down, and then it was like, all right, <laughs> here we go. And they, they paid for it. I mean, they paid for it in blood. But talk about, like you said, a redemption arc, an absolute clean sweep reversal. 7-2 in the favor of Danger Doodles. Now 7-2 in the favor of Katura. What's going to happen for the finals? I mean, at this point, so, someone has know. to win. We have to see a team win. Yeah. But man, oh man, let's let's take a look at the stats here. I mean, let's let's just read it off for me here, fellow. Yeah, I mean, we've got fourteen hundred, almost fifteen hundred damage Sheesh. by Jet. That was putting in some work in the matchup, and then you look at the bottom. I don't even need to name off the other four, the one K plus club here mm -hmm. for Katura. Gravy, the top damage dealer, isn't even in fifth against Katura. Oh, they simply man. were just having a heyday and doing God's work in match number two. And even if we were to go back all mm -hmm. the way to like match one stats, nowhere near comparable to what we witnessed right no. here. This is the Katura you were hyping up earlier in the series and we finally get to see them in action. So honestly, Danger Doodles, you really need to start playing your cards right or you will just get flushed out of this series and dropped in the loser's bracket. Credit where credit's due, though. Um, again, Merchant, 
12 and 4. Holy cow. I mean, usually most players, you know, I'm I'm happy when I go just net positive or you know, net neutral for my matches. Look at these. Look at this. 9 and 7 on Jet, 12 and 4 again on Merchant, 6 6 and 5 on Sinister, 7 and 8 on Dylan, 6 and 5 on Roach. I mean, these guys were either keeping it extremely close or they were just absolutely bussing. Gravy, you know, Danger Doodle's best player was 4 and 9. Adaxi, again, you want to talk about absolute terror in casuals. I'm playing. I see a Daxi. I'm like, yo, I'll just disconnect. Forget it, man. This guy is five and <laughs> nine. Foom. Again, MF Doom, eight and six. Ty, four and nine. Marble, six and seven. I mean, these guys are just. They're, again, you can't win a game if your entire team's dead. And if your entire team's dying more often than they're killing, you're going to lose your, your matches. And I mean, that's simple, obvious logic, but we can see the outcome. Yeah, I mean, it is still a first-person shooter at the end of the day, no matter how tactical it is. Mm -hmm. You still got to win your gunfights 90% of the time. Can't always go for those big brain plays every single matchup. But we have another match to Woo! see who's actually going to win this after a double up of 7-2 victories. Are we going to see a third one? Potentially. But we'll go on a short little break, and we'll figure that out in a few short minutes when we come back. See you guys in about five minutes. Bye-bye. And we're good. We're good. Let's go. You guys are clear. Okay. That is two in a row. What the hell? <laughs> oh, yeah. That was an interesting game. I thought it was going to be a sweep, but that was awesome. Me too, man. Uh, I do want to, like, I want you guys to mention Merchant's keyboard when we come back. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I can do that. Go pull up the scene. picture. Yeah, I, I have this. I have the picture in, in a scene right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's, they said five minute break for pee pee and poo poo. There's so, so much going on. Yeah, anything you want to say, Merchant? Or, I mean, Midship? <laughs> you got anything? Uh, I think Midship's dead again. Alright. Yeah, alright, I'll be right back. I'm gonna grab some carrots. <sighs> Oh, this scene looks awesome. Glad someone liked the card pun. <laughs> yeah, sounds like a great card pun. Oh, I actually forgot to turn on the music. Oops, but small error. Oh, I'm eating a salad. Oh, I started eating a salad and I just can't finish it because. <laughs> yeah, salads are hard to eat. I feel like at this time of the day. I think it's a good breakfast food, no cap. Yeah, like, it is, but it isn't. Feels good to do it, for sure. I'm trying to lose weight. It's better than eating a fucking cheeseburger. Okay, you guys ready? Is the ghost back? Because they're ready to queue. They are. Uh, I mean, I'm good. I think. Uh, Ghost, you here? Uh, I'll try to wait a couple, couple more moments. I, I'm telling them Ghost is AFK right now. 
Bro, I think I'm onto something with this whole truck view, Kazo. You show the main. I have, set, I I have you pull set up the a tiny screen. little one of the truck. Yeah, I'll pull. I'll make yours bigger, but I need to find a good, good scene. So EK for the off stream game. Actually, I think they're gonna show me what, what game it is in here. It's in scheduling. Wait, wait. The gnomes game and GB game is not being streamed. No, you are. You're the one streaming that one. Yeah, but like it's not in the main channel. Uh, Roach made the decision. I, I, I support Roach's decision. So, or I. Yeah, I'm also confused. Why are you not doing more off of the main channel? More off the main. Me? What are you talking about? No, just in, uh, maybe I'm wrong, but I felt like yesterday we were doing streams off of the main channel when they could have been on the main channel, and they weren't always like because we had to go to. Stay. Because the games are at the same time as the main channel. We we did do we did two main streams yep. yesterday. Yeah. But the the other, no, the other stream we're talking about. Yeah. Hey, so yeah. Up. I'm wrong about what I'm saying. Yeah. Wait, Shut wait, the fuck up, Merge stream. Goes <laughs> <laughs> goes goes. All right, so I'm going to move to cat. I'm going to count down the casters, and then basically you guys can mention the merchant's keyboard, and I'll switch to that scene as you guys are talking about it. So did we'll he like just fucking game. punch it? Like what happened to it? <laughs> I don't know. He's gaming too hard, and his D key broke or something. I don't know. But the D. Ready? He was giving them the D too hard. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Count down in five, four. You got three, intro. Yeah, two, I got you. One. <laughs> Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ghost. Join with the uh, join with me today is the one, the only, the fellow um, here for today's. We're currently tied up between Couture versus Danger Doodles, who have done not only a seven one on one team's favor, but a or a seven two, excuse me, on one team, but a seven two in the exact opposite way for both teams. So an absolutely, absolutely just gaming experience here so i'm really excited to look forward to this third one but real quick uh we have actually a live uh update on i believe it was merchant's keyboard now as you can see <clears throat> um so not only was he gaming so hard he broke the d but uh i mean absolutely gorgeous keyboard setup i need to know what this man has been buying i mean i really appreciate the hatsune miku going on at the top there i mean absolutely gaming god tier looking setup and so uh, we will be starting a gofundme to uh fix hashtag merchants keyboard um to try and you know get this man another d and uh, make sure that he can continue to keep fighting and giving the uh the enemy team <laughs> the assault enemy. Match and match. <laughs> hashtag collect the keys hashtag collect uh, the keys <laughs> i think we've got the game ready though oh so fantastic we'll that in a few <laughs> short moments gotta go hit the big old spectate button then we get to go and uh Woo! witness who's gonna win this one uh originally mm -hmm. danger doodles they had a really good show and there were some suspicions that maybe we would have a 2-0 victory series wise no Apparently sir not, because katura just ditched back the same amount of damage and pain I guess an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. So let's see which player or which team will go blind first, whether that be Katura or Danger Doodles going in the final match of this series. I honestly have no idea what we're bound to see here. Well, we say it's the final match, but if they tie, we could go into an overtime. That is true. So it's not over just yet, but... I think, again, the conversation needs to be how are these first few rounds going? Because we've seen Danger Doodles is good. They can push and they can they can do a 7-2. It's possible against literally Katura, who yep. did the exact same thing to him, to them. But it all started with the first couple rounds. It was that early momentum that they gained and seeing how they're going to play out. Danger Doodles got super scared. And, I mean, I think at the end, frankly, they just they weren't even playing. They were like, all right, we'll push into bank. We'll just kind of go on. Um, now, again... I think the conversation is going to revolve around a few key players. Jet with his mop saber play. Foom with anything that revolves violence. Uh, Merchant with his rotating. And then, of course, Marbles with his mop shots and his uh, his violence. Also, I, I want to bring this up because I keep seeing it. Ty and Gravy, they show up for Danger Doodles, but they're really not giving us those absolutely gorgeous picks that were, you know, those those Twitch clips, you know, that we're seeing from the rest of his team. Um, Dylan... Loaf is able is a great support. Roach, 
I want to see the rest of these guys as well, kind of just making their presence known. They do that either. I mean, it, it is literally anyone's race right now. That's why it's tied up. Yeah, and going here already off the rip on a factory. I've got I've got my concerns here. I'm wondering if we're gonna have a mop in play because there are some long angles you mm -hmm. can contend with, but not a lot compared to what you would normally see on a factory setup. So it is definitely a questionable option here. And at least for the attacking side here, it looks like uh, Doodles, they're going to opt to go around and mostly just try to get control of green. That's probably the best option here mm -hmm. because I've never been a big fan of the red door all the way on the right. And then you can go to dock as well after right. you try to bout your way in through green. But again, those are like only the two big points of contention here, at least in my mind. Yeah, and a 4-1 split like this, I definitely agree. Um, I think going for green, it looks like, let me just take a look at the players here. Uh, there is no NVG, so it's not going to be a power play, which is not the end of the world. But look at how these this uh, Couture team is set up. They're expecting a red door, but it's going to be a green docks push. So not the end of the world, because when the dust settles, they should be in a pretty decent spot. My concern, though, is going to be these walkways and how they manage that. And look at this. I mean... We've got four boys sneaking in here into servers. They're going to go straight up to walkways. So it's really going to come down to Merchant and Jet, as well as Dylan, locking down these kind of really long angles here to make sure that they don't get any any real damage. But man, they've been sneaking now. We're going to have to see how, who audio. is going to push for this. as they're, <laughs> they're literally just stacking up on the doors like, guys, you got to kick eventually. No, it looks like Foom's actually opting to migrate towards boilers. Finally, we have some action, but Merchant shut- No, Ty murders a Daxi! Oh, oh god! No. That's not supposed to happen, Doodles! <laughs> this is supposed to be your way of stopping the hero play. Gravy gets Merchant, so that's at least nice. I thought they were going to oh, use god. the opening of the dock wall as like an audio bait, perhaps, mm -hmm. but that just did not work out in the slightest. Fuma managed to get rid of Jet before they find a third on the round, and Marbles is just outside of Doc. Just his Chilling. players basically just all dying. Fuma is still alive. That's okay here. But you've got to worry about Dylan's Dylan's going to come the and Dylan's the two jump. stacked up yep. and off his stairs. Oh, God. Dylan goes wide. Down goes Marbles. And Fuma is the last alive. He's trying to bat with these long angles. He has a tar. So he could maybe win a couple of these gunfights. But it's three full HP defenders oh, against Fuma. man. Fume. Yeah. That's not looking pretty, and neither was that push into server room. That was a horrible way. I want to see if Roach is going to snag the saber. He's going for it. He gets it. Oh my! He's going to go for the clacker too. Oh my god! And he gets it. Oh, this this is going about as good for Katora as it possibly could have. First off, yeah. shoutouts to Ty for helping out Katora. I didn't know that he was a turncoat. That's pretty sweet. Um, second off. That attack was just, I mean, I don't want to say it was red, but those barbars just paid for themselves in physical gold. Um, again, Merchant being a great kind of initial pick, but again, shout out to Dylan. He recognized that when his team was was going after the uh, the Saber player at Docks, he jumped for it. He was like, yo, you guys distract him, I'll get him. He got him, and then all this left was Foom. Foom is a gamer. He'll kill people, but in a 3v1 situation where it is it is purely gun trades. Again, Foom's great on 1v1s, but 3v1s, there's only so many bullets that he can take before he becomes Spongebob. I think we've got the, the team names switched up. I was like, wait a minute. This doesn't look right. That's it, though. Everything else is correct. The okay. round win is in the correct place. All that, all that fun stuff. Stats are correct. It, it's just team names. We'll, we'll get that fixed. Well, That's it, not a big deal. I was like, I was having an existential crisis, and I was like, wait, what? And the no, darkest it's... timeline. They win even though they yeah. lose. <laughs> We're truly in the dark ages right now. That that round, despite the lights not going out, that was really dark for Doodles because they just they played that one so poorly again. Funneling and hard stalling. That's been like the two biggest points you and I have been talking about. And we have to keep bringing it up because we've seen no adaptation. It's the Correct. same mistakes Correct. over and over again. And Doodles, they're just scratching their head wondering, what's going on? What, what, what's going on, guys? Why are we losing so many rounds? Well, mm -hmm. you're, you're playing incorrectly. That's why. No, exactly. And that's that's what I'm talking about when, you know, uh, when, when I was watching the, the match versus uh, Yokuza versus Katura, my biggest criticism, and this was when I was talking with Shark, was who can adapt first you got two teams that are absolutely gridlocked in terms of skill i mean we watch like tw two separate ties who can change and you know correct whatever issues or you know however the other team is playing and we saw that from katura they did it they they were successful they won 
Danger Doodles are just not adapting, and so they are going to die at this rate. Again, the first three rounds are absolutely huge in terms of momentum, especially when both teams have tied. And so this is do or die here for one team. One team is going to be on elimination for this. Yeah, they'll have to be dropped down into the loser's bracket, which I feel like both these teams could contend well there. But oh, they'll be fine. You'd rather, yeah, absolutely. Just, you'd rather just prefer to stay up in the winter bracket and not have to deal with all the shenanigans that go down in the lower regions here of the winter major. <laughs> the under like regions. Oh, Merchant, baby. Oh, no. There's Merchant. He's got the hero plays intact. He's going he's for Ty. get aggressive. Does this work against Ty? Nope, it will not. In the background, though, at least Jet will get rid of Adaxi as well. It's still a man advantage favoring the defense. And Dylan just swings uncontested. Foom is now dead. And... Ty's just shaking his head, asking, how did Foom let that happen? Why was no one watching the green door or expecting that? That is a huge blunder, and now Ty They're has got to go big, essentially, here. They're saving. Now, Marble's already backed yep. out with the grenade. He he backed off. Ty was they, they made the call probably about maybe five or six seconds ago. Wow. We're only a minute and ten seconds into this game. And they're saving. And they're saving. I mean, Jesus. that is destruction of the highest order and now i really do hope that these defenders kind of start sniffing out maybe some of these bodies there is mvgs on them and if we go on to uh, a match where you know they can play with power that's a big deal that is a really big deal for them yeah i'm wondering if we're gonna have anyone overextend and maybe try to grab some loot off the bodies of the attackers jet is praying that someone peeks I'm... on beach and i really oh ty please be careful please don't oh. don't peek ty don't overstay your welcome don't you do it man save. okay jet back off commit to the save. don't get greedy there you go he just he, he knows it's too much that's the better play dylan will actually go and step up in the pit try to look for some loot yeah i, I mean the save it was probably the best call but mm -hmm. you know you should not have gotten to that position when the first minute didn't even drop yet it's just like what what's going on doodles well, what's happening this is, here this is kind of the issue with pushing pit this hard on operation razor queen it can work but again this angle you got this thing i mean as long as you have some general con confidence it's okay but because beach didn't even get anywhere it just it fell apart yeah i mean literally this is the the terrible thing that i see with you know the moonbook crew occasionally where we push in, nothing works. We get onto beach, someone dies. We get into pit, someone dies. And it's already a 3-5. You're like, <laughs> what am I supposed to do? So you just call for the save and you just pray to whatever, you know, flying spaghetti monster is above us that the next match that you're going to, or the next map you get isn't going to be as terrible. Because mind you, this is their attack, not their defense. Where, I mean, attack is, I'm not going to say it's, it's, dummy simple but throw flashbang make commitment make sure it's a 2v1 situation you should generally be okay where with defense yeah. you're like playing 5d chess because you're trying to guesstimate where your team is going to be where their team is going to be and how you need to react accordingly and we can see that already on the damage um marbles hasn't even made a presence in this match so far i mean marbles their key player from last map from the last two games hasn't even shown up yeah that's a that's a big issue. I'm yawning in the background. That's a big, just, yeah, this, that's a this big... This game's uh, almost putting me to sleep. Danger Doodles, you gotta step it up, man. What's going on? Where was match one Doodles? Where have they gone? This Who, is... What kind of what kind of skin crawler has, like, infested your homes and have, like, taken you <laughs> hostage? Like, these are not the same people, man. What's going on? Mm -hmm. No, exactly. And I think, again, those those key things that we're seeing when, when Danger Doodles gets into the, their heads almost... We're seeing yeah. they're, they're playing slower, they're playing more passive, but they're attackers, they have to get in there and get some damage down, but they can't. They're struggling so hard to do that that they're paying for it every single time. And Katura is capitalizing on it. They're like, oh, you're playing passive? All right, hey, bleed 30 seconds, we don't care. We're, we're on defense, <laughs> that's our job. So you thanks for making us, it easier. Yeah. Exactly. So very well done. Um, going on to bank though, Operation Lance Resolve is going to be the last map for this this uh, quarter, if you will, we do have Jet yep. on the the Moppity Oppity, and they they've got a saver for their trouble. So it's pretty it's a good day oh. to be uh, defending for Team Team Katora right now. And mind you, Saber's probably gonna be sitting somewhere uh, either in Tellers because again, 
That is, that is absolutely destruction. You could have them sitting this long angle because if they decide to go loans, that's destruction. You could have Jet watching a safer angle with that mop because, I mean, heck, he could even be sitting in uh, Vault. Oh, what are you doing? You're putting your most powerful weapon inside Vault and closing the door. Okay, that's, oh, I don't like that. I mean, he could play all the way in the back and have like a nice long angle, but yeah, that's, that's just like you're, you're already in a 4v5 for like, the like first three fourths of the round i think they're vouching heavy on the fact that they're almost 99 percent sure a lot of time is going to be wasted here by doodles but they're going to waste a little bit of time oh my god Andrew, dylan. But they'll waste plenty of bodies <laughs> dylan lines up two freebies and the molly cuts off the other two oh. so much damage already being done in the first 30 seconds of the round ty gets one in the middle of hallway dylan but that's not going to be anywhere dylan, near close oh. the amount of damage that dylan's done he'll finally pay for his crimes with blood as foom will pick up a 2k to their name but it's still a man advantage or even footing i should say now it's officially a man advantage as merchant will get rid of ty boom getting control of manager but after all of that bloodshed was it worth it uh the simple and easy answer is no <laughs> i mean that, that's, <laughs> that's the easy answer part. really they I, I, check your corners i mean that is that is like you know playing due process 101 dylan was sitting in what i would almost argue one of names. the most obvious well yeah of course why not you're gonna have you need one to clear this barbed wire and then another one to try and clear out bathroom because there's the first one now the question is he knows okay he knows that uh he's in bathroom does foom chuck the nade in to clear bathroom or is he gonna use it okay flash to bait bathroom grenade deep that could be big patience out. foom goes for sinister and it doesn't work uh, good try, Foom. Not good enough. <sighs> well, again, this Thanks is a case it. of it's it's Foom versus the world, and Foom's law does apply to almost only Foom. But what are you going to do? You run in, your entire team dies to one guy, and again, I'm so confused by pushing for manager? What? Like, I, I, I can understand the logic of they wanted to avoid these long angles, but thankfully, the, the Couture team decided to lock off not only Sinister Loaf, but their Saber, which... I mean, I've, I've always had my reservations and I always vo vocalize my opinion that you never really want to do that because right off the bat, it's a 5v4. Right off the bat, you're giving away your saber for to try and defend, which, okay, but um, wow, yeah, that's a 3-0. That's, uh, that's kind of hard. Marbles has played three rounds so far and has not done anything but die. I, Adaxi's got 75 damage to his name. Gray's got 100. Ty's got 120. And Foom got 345, but that's because he picked up three kills last round. I, what yeah. you know, this this to me is saying Danger Doodles is broken. They didn't spend this time to try and recover. And again, if you lose those first three rounds on a half when you're trying to rebuild your energy and your confidence, you're done. I I do not see unless Danger Doodles does yep. something absolutely drastic or we have some huge pop off by the team. Right now, they're they're kind of the, the plane's burning. They were able to kind of recover a little bit. It's now on fire, and one of the engines has exploded. I do not see them recovering at this point. Like yeah. wing destroyed. They're kind of looking at like like, like my stock portfolio for the past like three weeks. It's just down in red and pain. Just, 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 just try to look at it. It's just, it's <laughs> just more just, bad just memories. It, just, just, yeah, just cut your losses while you're young, you know, <laughs> to uh, maybe go back into it a little later in life. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, yeah, I talked about you know mental being chalked and all that mm -hmm. i think that's actually a problem here for doodles at this yep. point i was like jokingly saying it for kitora oh. but it was like match one and i was like eh, it's just you know i call it match one shakes like mm -hmm. you don't really mm -hmm. do good on match one but it's not a best of one so you have time to recover right kitora has clearly noticed that and they're just kind of taking the bag and running with it yep. and danger doodles they are just tripping at every crack in the sidewalk they have not been able to catch up with kitora throughout these entire double matches here it's just it ain't pretty to be honest here and maybe on the defense this will be their saving grace as now they no no longer have to funnel as an attacking team now they can kind of play at their own uh, at their own time i guess mm -hmm. uh, at their own pacing mm -hmm. but that's still 
that's still a lot to say without really a lot to back it up. Marbles with a mop is a great call. Um, he's watching the red door, which I don't think is the best move, but the fact that they're bringing out the mop round one, when again, they have killed them, large map and bank, super large map. They are putting all their eggs into this one basket saying, we will stop you here. There's the wall charge. They're going to be going for power, which I think is a great play because now a mop is useful, but it's a whole lot less useful. And so far, actually, these guys have been doing pretty good to dance and avoid each other. So I like that. The grenade didn't do a whole lot. It cleared a barbed wire that wasn't there. So Foom is going to need to anchor and so will Gravy. Now, hopefully when Roach and Sinister have opened this door, uh, Sinister doesn't murder Roach trying to push in. Uh, but I do like this this repositioning here by the defensive side. They, they've stacked up, and so far they've been doing a great job at at least containing the Katura push. Yeah, and they have no real way of rotating around, essentially. They would have to fully commit to either one place or the other, and they're just kind of doing this three and two split, and they're just backpedaling into oh, their own great setup Oh, flash. Here. Flash comes out. That's going to completely deny Gravy's position here. That allows them to find two picks as oh, they line up, essentially. God. Three instant frags here for the attacking side of Katura. They are making minced meat out of doodles here. It's just a Daxi, and he will meet the exact same fate as the rest of their team. It's a flawless round to start off the attack for Katura and now they could possibly pick up the mop if they're able to find it as well this is not a brilliant start for the doodles it's just getting worse and worse as we dive deeper into this final series okay they are gonna go shopping i was gonna say i don't even know if they'll know that mop was pulled because okay dylan's gonna find it i think more by chance because marbles didn't even fire the gun I mean, their most powerful weapon wasn't even utilized, and I just, I want to talk about the execution here for just a second. They flashed Gravy, knowing he was there, which then brought Ty forwards, because Ty needed to, to be, you know, the flash cover for Gravy, which, which allowed Jet from office to kill Ty, and then allow them to jump in and secure Gravy. I mean, that is... Yeah flawless that is wonderful to see from them that is just the kind of execution that we need to see from danger doodles and except they're on the losing side for this click 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 bodies are dropped and the entire defending team died i mean marbles we are in four wake rounds up now. wake up get out of bed it's time to play due process uh. man that that's it's so heartbreaking because we've seen marbles do amazing magical things not only as a mop player or a saber player but just as a team player in general he hasn't even been in the game that is how hard katora has absolutely shut down him and the rest of their team i mean he's looking like me in my rank games to be honest here he's that's, just that's looking like me nice in general <laughs> yeah <laughs> The, the blessing of casting is you don't have to be down there and suffer the same fate as uh, yeah. as Danger Doodles, which is wonderful because we get to sit by little margar margaritas and not have to deal with it when, uh, man, I feel so bad because I bet those comms right now for Danger Doodles, they're, they are not pretty, which is so heartbreaking because, no. again, all of these guys are absolutely gunning gods. I mean, you know, <laughs> Marvel's even breaking his, or I think it was Merchant, maybe. Merchant, uh, yeah. yeah. it was Merchant, never mind. Merchant was, Ma Merchant broke the D key, but... Kind of giving the D key over to the uh, the uh, Danger Jewel team, saying, "Hey, I found your D. It's here. On, I've, I've got it." Yeah, I mean, oh, it, man. they really needed the W key to break or something, or even the S key because we've seen a lot of fallback by Yeah, Kitura, because all I've been seeing yet, is them taking L's. Oh yeah, and then for Doodles, they are hitting W way too hard, and it's just it's not looking good for them. So. It looks like we're going to have a reattempt here of like that three to two split, essentially. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In all honesty, especially on like Kill Dome, I would rather prefer having everyone push one direction and then you rotate. Because if you get full pick control, then you might be able to force the players in base to fall back because now they have to worry about that green door. And then that's when you push up into beach. The only issue is that you still have to worry about castle, but there's no mop. So it's going to be 10 times easier to clear out that one position. So... If we see a, a flurry of people just fly in through pit, mm -hmm. that would probably make the lives of Katura 10 times easier, but they still should have this in a theoretical win just based off of what kind of weaponry they've been able to bring over here in round number five. Personally, I like to see a 3 2 with jungle push just because, I mean, obviously you got to deal with the auto shoddy, but yep. power, pit power is just always, again, you can see Ty's in a good position, Foom's in a good position. This is so far stacking up to be the best setup that 
Danger Doodles could have. Merchant's going to be the entry. Good Molotov to defend, but here comes the auto shotty. It is creeping and it is lurking, ready for these guys to even try and get past this barbar. Good smoke. Marbles is going to try and mag dump that beach door, but Dylan... No, Dylan doesn't actually get the pick, and so Marbles is just going to run away, happy as can be, as he didn't even take any damage on that. The pick guys, again, are trying to force the way through, but let's see if this, again, that, that flexibility and that awareness by the Couture team recognizes that this, okay, they are going to pull completely away from yep. Pit. 100% agree with this call. They, there is no reason for them to be going for Pit. They need to push into Beach. They need to first off get Marbles and then start trying to secure Castle. There's two key things that I like to talk about on Kill Dome. That is Castle and that is Observation. Both teams need to either play around it or try and take it. And right off the bat, Merchant going to be trying to secure and clear Pit. Ty doesn't even nice. seem to hear him. That is absolute discussion. And they do get, okay, so they are going to try and, that's, oh my god, the rotate is so clean from them. Yeah, it's just honestly beautiful work being done by Katura. They even killed a Daxi in the top of Castle. The base player will fall as well. Marbles is now shut down. Gravy up at the top of Ruins has that full auto here, and he's just waiting for someone to push him, but no one's really going to bite the bullet here. They're just going to try to basically just collapse upon Foom, get rid of him, and now it's a shotgun player so far away from the bomb. It'll have to be a flank attended by Gravy, but so much has already been committed by this full auto player. It might be too little too late. However, the lack of information here that could be crucial they'll start to to nope. just bait down oh that my defuse. god they're not entirely aware as to where he is up until jet shuts him down so it didn't matter that was yeah great adaptation mm -hmm. and game sense in the middle of that round to realize what you needed to fall back on that was much better done by katura overall not fully committed pit like we that. saw we saw what uh, danger doodles did wrong and how katura did the same thing but adapted like you said they yeah. were going for pit. They realized it didn't work. So what they do, they took two of their guys away from pit and then pushed them through beach because they, they saw that there was some space. They could push for that. And then they just rotated them back into pit. So it worked. You know, it was great because they found Ty, who I guess didn't realize that because beach and the door were so close that they might just kind of, you know, go through that. And um, again, great just heads up play. I mean, the heads up play that we're seeing from uh, Couture has just been great. Hey, and wouldn't you know, Marbles is finally up there. He did get some damage, so now we have the entire Danger Doodles, Danger Doodles team up and ready to get some violence going. Uh, but at that point, we've already got Merchant, who's got 973. And I think if you take like the top three or maybe even four players for the entire Danger Doodles team, you'll equate to the, the amount of violence that we have seen from Merchant so far. So, I mean, goodness, I mean, goodness, low is second their worst player in terms of damage loaf is second place to danger doodles who foom again i mean foom is foom but he's at 435 and sinister loaf's at 350 just to give you a, an understanding of how despairing these these statistics are showing yeah and also marbles was at the bottom for the first four rounds and then round, round five he just springs up out of nowhere that's not a great it's sign good, especially yeah. when you don't win that round mm -hmm. so it just the odds they're not looking good here for danger doodles the stars are definitely aligning here for katura and yeah. i mean they're they're just not they're not slowing down at all really their attacking strategy has been top notch they've been able to be quick on their feet notice when something's going wrong and they fix it almost immediately and that kind of quickness is so important especially on a map like bank so i, I i'm really concerned here for the defense of the doodles especially now they don't even have a full auto here for bank not the end of the world i mean we've seen crazier things happen and that's why i think we're going to be seeing like four or five barbed wires i think i saw one already get dropped so i think it's about four uh barbed wires getting utilized i mean the barbed wires effectively act as a slow deterrent so that way you know you guys oh they're gonna do the foom strat okay so it looks like they're also gonna pay uh pay one man to the vault and hopefully they are able to utilize the same skill now this time it's going to be foom with no saber um because as we had seen from when katura did the same same thing they had loaf in there with a saber so already off the bat it's not the end of the world but we've got two guys here in lobby to try and stop this aggression i love that loaf has got the mop though so this time instead of a saber it's going to be the the mop and oh my goodness they are just the attacking team is just working their way here all, they're at the end of Hall already. Normally, you would see the Hall is like yeah. this absolute bloodbath to pay for the attackers to get in. Ty didn't even want to bother. He's like, hey, just go ahead. Don't don't even worry about it. Dylan does not fall to Marbles. So Marbles is able to pick him up. And Roach and Gravy do eventually trade out in terms of bodies paid. So 
Merchant, hello, sir. You're already in accounting, but they've got a wolf pack about to chase him down. And they're not too sure about Merchant's position uh -oh. up until now. He gets one. tie trades them back. Marbles falls in the hands of Jet here. And the Knack player will now be eliminated. It is only Foom left to defend with a whopping minute left on the board. The switch is now hit. He's got a Molly here, so he can bait for a little bit of time. But so does the attack. And they even have a flashbang as well. This is not looking great here. The Molly gets thrown very early on here. Both of them being exchanged, essentially. So, we've got plenty of time to work I with here like because smoke. of that a flashbang and a smoke here boom he's got to start praying to some sort of higher being because he's going to need a miracle to save him from a six and oh sweep here in the first half 30 seconds remain loaf is going around the entire map maybe to pick up some utility and yep. that's exactly what's going to be he'll go for a grenade which could be massive here throws out a smoke for some odd reason just pick up the flash i guess that explains uh, it here but seconds. they have wasted a lot of time because of that yeah 20 seconds left the flashbang's going to be a dud oh, but Boom still dies in that 1v1 jet will manage to win a huge confrontation there because honestly loaf wasting a lot of time in that situation mm -hmm. if jet had jumped the gun and died to boom that actually could have been a round loss there for Katura, but luckily it was not. No, absolutely. And again, this is what I'm talking about. This was finally, I got, I got a real world example of why I don't like having one guy in vault. He, he maybe, he may, hey, maybe he could have clutched up. Sure, absolutely. I mean, he's boom. We saw the dude go absolutely ballistic in a few rounds prior, but with him sitting in there, what did he achieve besides hurt Jet a little bit and die? You know, this is where I gesture with my hands go, not a whole lot else. He could have been flanking, he could have been rotating, he could have supported the team inside accounting, so instead of having three people chase one guy and die, he could have been sitting in manager, he could have been sitting in halls, he could have been sitting in security. There's just so many other things he could have been doing in that, in that round besides sitting in vault, twiddling his thumbs. And I, I just, I, I, I can never fully confidently agree with that kind of play, it just, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, also the fallback going into accounting, that was the correct play, but they gave away all of lobby. They needed to have at least one guy yeah. making sure that mob player didn't get inside the building for free and picked up like a, a rifle rifle to play for close quarters. Mm -hmm. It, just a big oversight there by Doodles. And maybe if they had Foom alive, that extra player, maybe he could have been watching that instead or just someone else could have been there at the wheel. Because despite the fact that we had a one-man advantage there for the Doodles, Foom was just sitting in the timeout corner basically the whole round. So exactly. it was on even footing. So it, it just was not the best play overall. And the only way that we would have had Danger Doodles win that round is by the mistake made by Katura, which is something you shouldn't always be, you know, falling back to. No, so, exactly, exactly. And that's... Yeah. That's the again. I just I can't agree with that kind of call because you're you're giving you're putting the burden of the mistake, not on you're not you're not even able to put the burden of the mistake on them because now it's like okay well we've given you the advantage it's a five v four until you get to my bomb and look I again we've been hyping and talking about Doom this entire game because of how, how much of a gamer gamer he is had it been a five on three five on or three on one. I mean, come on, like, he's he's a gamer, but you get two flash, again, two flashbangs, both corners. I like the Molotov throw. That was a good bait just to ad identify which side he was on. Now, had Loaf been in there, all, all the Jet had to do is throw a flash on the left. That forces him to go and play around the Molotov on the right. You've got Loaf there to cover, and then Bob's your uncle, you're done. But in this case, we're now here on Operation Dark Val uh, Yankee, excuse me. I was about to say Valkyrie. We've got Jet with the, the Saber, so I'm assuming we're going to see a wall yeah, wall charge in Dylan's hands. Marbles is going to be trying to play this like behind the, the bomb kind of thing here. But uh, let's see, where is this wall charge? It's going to be on the corner here. So they're going to be watching this long, clean angle so that way avoid anyone on the rotation. Gravy's going to be in a good spot to try and hold for maybe an, a really spicy flank. I'm really curious to see how he's going to do because he might just go full cannonball on this. But no, he's going to actually get forced away by Merchant. Yeah, the Molly gets popped though. A little bit of time being wasted, so now he can maybe rotate around to better counteract this shutter play. Surprised that no one went around to go freezer as well, because you could probably overcommit on this round because mm -hmm. it is technically the last round if you win it. But Dude. I guess we'll see a bit of a safer confrontation here. The rush comes inside a teller. Is that Molly not working out in the slightest? A Daxi auto shot falls here. Still oh. a five on five, and yeah, that auto shot, you gotta worry about it. It's so close to that diffuser. Dylan will now be dropped. Merchants there on the trade though, and Ty 
barely gets inside a bathroom. That was too close to call. So we're in that four versus four situation. Merchant on incredibly low HP, and we'll try to bait that Diffuser. Gravy goes wide, but gets caught on the bomb chassis. Diffuser goes down. No one's here to cover but Foom, perhaps, but he's still stuck inside a freezer. Here comes the swing from Tellers, but it's not good enough. Two versus two now. Foom and Marbles, the last two alive to try to keep their team alive here for Danger Doodles. They have the health advantage, and they can still play for time and that Diffuser bait because Marbles is still inside of Tellers and has that long sight line to play around potentially, mm -hmm. but that's if Jack could not win this one versus one. He doesn't! He's not going to land the marks in time. He had the Saber there in that situation. Not the best weapon to go in such close quarters confrontations here, and now Loaf is just kind of dwindling his thumbs between Arcade and Fridges, trying to wonder how he's going to win out between this tag team Team crossfire boom is just playing so passive in this oh. position and wins the 1v1 against finally Lowe. we finally see a win on the board for doodles but it has taken way too long for that to happen they are they have to play perfect for the rest of this match just to tie that is what they're playing for a tie right now and go not, to another series yeah just to get into another exactly just to play another round yeah that's I mean, it's a little to throw at this point, frankly. I, I want to point out, because this is one thing that I saw. I think, I don't know if they, they arced it perfectly or just because of the Molotov spread. I think it was Merchant who threw a Molotov to clear out some of um, of Tellers. And it was, I was just like, wait yeah. a minute. I think he actually, he lobbed it perfectly to get in there. And I was just, I was so impressed by that. But yeah, I'm Gravy, oh, that's heartbreaking to see the poor guy. He got caught on the chassis of bomb and then the barbed wire slowed him down. Now, of course, we did see that, that great rotation flank from uh, the defending team, you know, from uh, Danger Doodles as they, they came in, they found the two guys looking the wrong way. And then it literally just became this, this poor situation for Sinister where he's like, well, I got to do something. I have to win. First off, he has to win a heads-up fight against one of the two players, one of the last two defenders, and then do that with no utility, which makes it even more miserable because just to try and get to some of his buddies means that he's going to be checking all these, these angles in these corners. So, I mean, that, we finally saw Danger Doodles not only play cohesively, but they were also spread out enough where once the collapse happened, they were able to consume one side. In this case, it was the west side for the, the uh, attackers. And then reorganize themselves and play around the bomb to make, again, Sinister into this absolutely untenable situation where he had to pick one side. And in this case, he picked wrong because he found Foom. Uh, yep. Foom's law. Foom's law, baby. Foom's law. on that trope way too long. So is Danger Rules, apparently. Now we go in a kill house where I believe Katur wanted to go for something like get opened up the club door mm -hmm. and then also go into reception. That's not a horrible idea. You don't have to really funnel into hallway to go into reception. You just go around through lockers, but it looks like the defense will still have that taken care of as well with a couple sets of barbed wire here and there. So this is not a difficult position overall for Katura to win, which is why I'm a bit worried for Danger Doodles. I mean, unless they just want to throw at this point, mm -hmm. they really should be trying their hardest to deny both that club position and also stall that reception area too. Well, Operation Orion Banner kind of, uh, it's got this really nice long bar place where Ty, as you can already see, is kind of sitting there. And I like the setup. You've got Marbles watching this red door who, you know, if push comes to shove, all he's got to do is really just rotate, assuming that there's no wall charge, which obviously since this is, they used it on C-Store, they don't have to worry about some crazy thing from that. Gravy's in a good, you know, jump spot. Adaxi's going to see the entire team, and he should be communicating this, and he's going to try and run away. Hopefully he gets into a good rat spot, but no, he's going to continue to get in this heads-up fight, and he stays alive, but now it's going to come down to Foom. Adaxi gets one? Hello! Okay. You take those, and now Foom's going to back off. So now the play is going to be coming into near and around club. Gravy also trades out, and so far this is going pretty good here for the defenders. Yeah, but now Dylan has the full auto because Gravy was just caught out in no man's land, essentially. Wall bangs are being shot through kitchen trying to get rid of Foom, but they're not going to, oh, to actually get rid baby of Baby marbles. marbles lands a brilliant shot on a roach. A smoke will go down, but it's far too late. That will cover the rush, though. Maybe they can try to isolate marbles, perhaps. Foom jumps into action, though, just the right time. Ty's still in the oh. back of bar as well. Get rid of one. There goes the full auto. He might need to switch weapons here, though, as you could probably try to play for range with both the mop and long AK in the hands Foom of Foom the god! Foom, and there goes Hello? The gat out of all weapons, too. There we have it. A second round here for Danger Doodles, but how long can they keep the ball rolling? That's the big question here.
Dude, someone check Foom for walls. What the heck was that, man? He literally just stood there and was like, hmm. You know, this wall looks a little... Da, 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 da. Oh, yeah, you're dead now. All right, cool, 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 cool. Um, <laughs> Marvel's, you know, finally landing some great shots with the mop was great. Um, I want to point out, Ty was sitting in the back ratting behind that bar for probably a good 10 or 15 seconds while the attackers came in and then just picked and picked and picked and picked. Got some damage, was able to trade. And again, for the defender side, usually it's a lot easier for the defenders to trade neutral. As the attackers, you always want to trade positive, as in get a kill, maybe get a little bit more damage done, and then die. Where the defenders, they're happy to trade because as soon as you create either a one-on-one -on -one situation, you're going to always be in an advantage because the attackers have to defuse. So we're finally starting to see the, you know, the, the danger doodles wake up. Now, what scares me, though, is I don't want it to end on a 7-2, because then how do you summarize the game? Well, it was three matches that ended 7-2. Who won? Well, <laughs> we'll have to see Get here at up. the end of this. It's going to be Operation Jackal, Jackal uh, Fury. It's going to be a factory map. So again, big, long-range maps. And I do want to point this out, because Jet did bring the Saber for Sea Store. This is going to be the first time where I would I think we can comfortably say Marbles with the Mop is going to have the advantage on the attacking team because you no know, yeah Gravy did pick it up so we're going to have both power weapons here on the defender's side on a big map big map big gun big power for the defenders Yeah they're going to just have range as their best friend really Yep absolutely or factory so and this it, is a huge net buff for it. It's looking like it's going to be an office server farm, which is pretty standard, I'd like to say. Um, I mean, sometimes you'll see them go for, like, this long red door kind of push to get power if they had their ranged weapons. That's obviously not going to be the case here because they don't have those anymore. Plenty of flares, just in case. Uh, let me just check with our attacking team. They do have NVGs, so my guesstimation here... They're going to open server, they're going to try and breach office, but then they're going to want to have one guy rotate and hit power, so that way they can try and mitigate. But here's the thing, Gravy's got the saber. So you park my man Gravy here watching this blue door, or just trying to watch, you know, storage, he's got, he's got vision. He will be able to see, obviously, with the saber giving you vision through the dark, he can still be a power play, or power player, excuse me. Yeah, so this is... Honestly, everything's looking great here, at least on Factory. You always need to take into consideration, though, after this round, what are the cards going to look like here for Danger Duels once again? Because this does look to be like a really strong round for them, unless we have Katura just pull some magic rabbit out of their hat or something and just end up sweeping this out to a third 7-2 to two in a row, which would be hilarious. Mm -hmm. But I'd like to see more bite back by Danger Duels, of course. Server farm, now in control of the attack. They can begin to trudge their way forward, but obviously Danger Duels, they were expecting this. They are just playing these passive angles. They almost wanted to give away that part of the map for free entirely so they can just hold down these long angles. I do not blame them in the slightest because, again, Saber and Mop, range is going to be their friend here. Mm -hmm. And trying to hold office for as long as possible will probably be their friend as well just to burn through more time, really force that defuse play perhaps, and Ty already gets a big pick. Down goes Jet. The rush is being <gasps> attempted to inside the office, but they didn't do anything in there. Oh my yeah, god! Like, goes. They didn't spot out. Boom! He gets a 2k off the Oh rim, baby! A, a triple! Law is in full motion here as Dylan is the only one left to stand alone here for the attack. I mean, we talked about though, this was a very stacked defensive round win here based off of weaponry and sheer positioning by Danger oh, Doodles. Geez. It's going to be up to them to win another three in a row after that miraculous or pardon masterful round win, my mistake, to make sure they can go to an entire other series after a tie. I. I want to point this out because this is the exact same thing that we were giving Danger Doodles a uh, some some heat for about checking their corners. We saw back on the yep. first map with Bank and Auto the the auto shot getting used. Checking your corners that is that is basics 101. They threw the flash and I watched Foom because I got onto his POV. He sat there and waited. He was like, "Okay, you don't see me. Let's just go ahead and jump." And took one, not two, but three. Oh baby, a triple. Oh yeah. So Foom the Foom effect. In full swing there, getting himself onto the board. And again, Foom, I have just been watching. He has just been climbing it for his team. And again, this is just showing the absolute gamer bread that this man is pulling for his team. Nine and six currently. The closest other person is Marbles, who has been using the Saber and Mop the entire game. 
is only at six and five for their team. So Danger Doodles, we're, we can finally start talking to them about them, talking about them because they're doing things. We're finally getting to see them. Uh, Kitura, I don't know if it's maybe because they're not a big fan of these maps. Maybe it's just they were kind of waiting to play on the defensive side, and now that they're able to, you know, play on the exact same uh, maps as they've seen, they've gotten a chance to kind of understand, play them a bit more organically, throw some ideas at it. Now they're going to be on the defensive side, and so now they can kind of plan around how they want to try and secure one. They just have to do one, fellow, to get themselves yeah. over this hump and win this series and throw <laughs> Danger Doodles into the losers, uh, the losers round. Yeah, no, I think you're at the first time losers bracket. Losers but, bracket, you know, okay. It's, it's, it's the same thing. Potato, potato, same thing, you know. Mm -hmm. Not even potato, potato. No, we're going real basic here. Real base. <laughs> oh, yeah. It, it's going to be the long con game. For Danger Duels, of course. Again, they're on the uphill climb here, mm -hmm. trying to get to overtime and then play a whole nother series to win. That's some huge stakes here. So they can't overcommit anything on one round where, for the defense, in theory, they could do that if they want to. Are they going to here, though, on C Store? It doesn't look like it, unfortunately. I, I really don't know why i mean i get it if they do win then that's a big upset but mm -hmm. you only need one round yeah i no, feel absolutely. like you can get away with that and i mean a pretty moderate investment is what is the phrase i'll use here they do have a kr and the silence uh gruber as well as eggmar so nothing nothing too powerful no auto shoddy that we saw from uh danger doodles you know when they were playing on, on grave or anything like that but a different wall charge position again i always love to talk about it you got different teams you got different ideas and great flash loaf is gonna get completely annihilated by a daxi great start but marbles tries to dive in and dies and tie as well so right off the bat as the dust settles here for these teams we've got uh Ketura in an extremely favorable position the danger doodles down a ton of health on these attackers yeah, they just smoked two players just trying to rush past Fridges. Dylan with three on the round. He's going big here for his team. They want to confirm that they don't want to go to a fourth and final match here against one of the better teams here in this division so far. Diffuser now being ticked off. Gravy's trying his base to at least try to get this fourth round as a win, but oh, he's got to worry about those long range and now close range engagements as well. Jet swings wide. He denies the ace essentially, but guarantees the win as we won't see a 7-2 to two victory. Victory, but it's basically the same thing same as thing but different us out of the match seven to three congratulations to katura for i mean again that first round i was sweating bullets for those guys i was like man they're good oh, yeah. they're good players i've seen them do a, a miraculous things but whew, that one looked rough and then they just gunned it they're like all right boys we get them let's send it and they again another day at the yeah. office for for katura but let's oh, take a I look think at the uh... stats so yeah. excited it, it's stat time oh, we gotta go look baby. at these man so uh, right Ooh. off the i want to point this out even though they lost adaxi had a three for three opening duel so for every engagement he had he won them i mean that is that is that's so powerful but he just couldn't capitalize it with his team foom 1340 he did the most damage out of every player on the entire team and he still lost that sucks man i that's when you go when you go nine and seven, no one in your team gets not even that close. You have two players on the other team who went thirteen and five and twelve and six, and you still lose for your team. That sucks. Oh man, that's just rough. Hey, what I want to know is if we're actually gonna have an interview here. For this, Ooh, yes, uh, yes, thing. please, absolutely. Ninety-nine percent sure we got pinged a second ago. Uh, yeah, we don't know <laughs> who yet, but we're looking. And uh, apparently, I don't know what's going on with Ghost's camera. I have uh, ascended. I have gone to a third yeah. plane of existence. Please send me chips. I am scared. <laughs> I'm hungry, and there's second. no good food up here. Let me see if maybe I can refresh my, my OBS. See if that may be... Shoot. Gandhi was just tripping some stuff behind you as oh, well. Man. That was not a pretty sight either, yeah. Let's see if that'll Oof. fix it. There we go. Hey! There we go. Okay, so... Um, yes, as, as we were going to be, let me take a look at the conversations between our players. Um, interview, don't know yet. Uh, looks like we're going to, we might be getting Dylan um, for oh the Team Katura, which, fantastic, because we saw Dylan. Um, I think the biggest thing that I really wanted to ask him about was that match, that uh, situation. Well, I'll, I'll hold off until he gets here, but um, Dragon. All right, cool. So we are going to be getting Dylan here. 
Um, really excited to see how this is going to go because I'm looking forward to asking him a few questions about um, not only the team's energy and the synergy that we were seeing because especially, again, losing your first round is, is such a, a mountain in terms of mentality to climb for, the, uh, for your team yeah. that being able to drag it back like that was fantastic. Yeah, there's definitely a lot to pick at for Dylan's brain. Also, probably what was going on in your mind when you just saw two people rush at you in fridges. That was uh, that was a bit questionable Yep. yep. by the doodles. But, you know, we'll have to wait until he joins in the Discord for us to uh, get our answers revealed, of course. But that shouldn't take too long, hopefully, nah. uh, because this has been a really long matchup. And I have to go do a scuff cast after this with uh, Laboxy. So that's... Uh, Lovely. That's going to be fun. No, absolutely. Who, who are you guys going to be casting? Uh, GB and Gnomes, I think it is. Yeah, it's GB and Gnomes. <clears throat> well, um, that should be a, a very... <clears throat> um, that's gonna be a safe game. bet. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be a game. All right. Well, it is what it is. But um, no, that's that's fantastic. For uh, again, always make sure uh, there. We've got a bunch of side streams going on all the time. Again, shouts to uh, Stuff Shark, who I had the pleasure of casting with yesterday. As yep. uh, you know, even though the main main match is going on, there is a bunch of other little things, and it looks like there we go. Uh, it looks like we have gotten the man, the myth, the Dylan to join us today. Hello, sir. Hello. <laughs> So, oh, um, right off the bat, let's. The first question I want to ask was, how did you feel the team did comparatively to Danger Doodles? Let's start there. Uh, the first round, or first game, should I say, was mm -hmm. definitely mental based, and it was more about because we've been running a certain team comp recently with me, Merchant, Muse, mm -hmm. um, Jet, and Roach, but we had to switch it up today because Muse couldn't play. But yep. the first game was all about us getting used to it. We hadn't mm -hmm. had a warm up. Like mental was kind of low. The second game, I kind of started reading marbles, trying to figure out how we was playing. Yes, sir. Saw that that and, jump that you did on uh, on bang or uh, excuse me, factory, where you jumped in and <laughs> ate him alive. Yeah, I uh, said the the way I like to do because recently I got changed to IGL on mm -hmm. Kitora, and the way I like to do it is take the first like half of a game or full game to figure out how they're playing and then mm -hmm. either counter play it or just play the complete opposite of them so what were Which, you kind of seeing from uh the danger doodles that you know that you needed to adapt to a lot of it was pressure late game they liked on attack they like to wait mm -hmm. until 50 seconds left and then just rush it so the way we just we played aggressive early, mm -hmm. or we played very heavy late game, and it just ended up working in our favor constantly. Yeah, we saw that happen uh, countless times, so I'm glad we weren't going crazy up in the boost noticing that at, as well. Uh, in the last round, funny enough, there's one thing I want to pick your brain at. Did you expect them to, after getting shutters open, to just immediately rush near fridges into you for that no. 2K? Or were you expecting to <laughs> I was, No. I was expecting a telepush or at least yep. a double blow. Mm -hmm. But then they started rushing. I got the call that they were just booking it to mm -hmm. me. And Jet was already playing with me. I got Jet to take the initial contact and then... It just went from there. Fair Fantastic. Enough. Did you have another question, fellow, before uh, I ask one more? So, yeah, I really did not, to be honest, because you answered all the really good ones for the most part. So, <laughs> I was going to say, so, um, Dylan, the, the biggest question that I had was now, how were you kind of spacing out your team? Because I noticed a few cases where um, either you guys had a, a, a stack-up situation or uh, were you trying to kind of keep your guys a bit more spaced out? Were you trying to kind of go for more wolf pack style play? A lot of the time, I really like to play, um, like, where we can... Alright. Yeah, I like to play specific barbs where we can play off them and mm -hmm. play off each other. So I'm just... Where any sort of opening mm -hmm. that is just wide enough for a barb, we kind of all stack it. But then sometimes we'll have, like, say, Muse or yeah. Loaf. We'll have them playing far away from everyone. Try and get one or two picks and then either bring them back or they die for it. Right, right. It, so, so it's kind of like a 50-50. It depends on mainly the map, but mm -hmm. also how everyone's feeling with playing what guns, you know, like what you tell. 
So I always like to ask this last question is more of kind of a uh, philosophical idea or question is more of what was kind of like the biggest thing that you, you took away from that match with them as you kind of progress here into the rest of the series. I mean, you're, you have some pretty huge teams that you get to play against. You're still up in the upper bracket. I mean, the first one that everyone that comes to mind for everyone, Global Breakout. I mean, they're off to go play a very close match with uh, Gnomes here later this afternoon. But, uh, you know, how do you how do you kind of plan against something like that? How, what do you take from someone from a team like Danger Doodles and apply that to something like Global Breakout? I think I don't know how it's going to go against GB because I we've surprised ourselves with playing against Yakuza. YY. Yeah, yeah that was that was YY. a great match. Um, but yeah, we we knew we could do it, but mm -hmm. just proving it in a major of all things mm -hmm. kind of open the eyes to everyone that the the change in what we were doing kind of paid off mm -hmm. and then the game against danger dudes today it did look very dire at first i will say but then when we actually got the ball rolling and stuff i'd say that was like time yeah but against gb is like i've only played against them on gnomes i've mm -hmm. not played we're not scrims them we've not played against them in an open so i think it really comes down to see how they play against us and how mm -hmm. we play against them in the game excellent one last question any shout outs you want to give to your to the team right now you're at the the top of the mountain your voice can be heard by thousands of millions of people you know any any shout outs for for any friends family loved ones i don't know just i i'd say the entire team we've all mm. played we've all played amazing like especially even if like today with muse he couldn't play but he was still there mm -hmm. like he was still helping us with mental like keeping us all in check like all of everyone did very well even if they weren't playing fantastic well again dylan i appreciate your time sir thank you for joining us for this interview and um definitely see you and hopefully even further down the upper bracket yeah we, we plan on getting at least number two Good man. Good man. Fair enough. The, See you uh, later, Dylan. Thank you again. See ya. Thank you for having me. Yep, have a good Bye. one, man. Well, yep. all that being said, this uh, concludes our duo here of the afternoon. I think we've got Benny and then Melvin here for the next stream matchup. So that'll be I believe so, good. yep. Yeah, so with all that being said, we'll go into a short little break, get that matchup ready, and then I will have to go and cast the GB versus Gnomes game with Boxy, so that's going to be a whole kahoot. So if we get that started up early, then if you're interested in trying to soul search for that game, maybe hit me up and I'll try to give you the information towards that. But it's an absolute pleasure. Hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and to see you all again very, very soon for some more DPL action. Thank you, everyone. Shouts to production. All right, we're clear. Excellent. Good shit, boys. <sighs> yeah, good cast, fellow. Well done, man. Nice. Got a uh, boxy now. <laughs> have fun. Fucking boxy? You guys still have boxy cast? Yeah, I don't know how he got through the cracks. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Don't know how he got through the cracks, man. <laughs> uh, I'm starting to get calls and shit. I gotta go, boys. I'll see you. All right, yeah. goodbye. Thanks, thanks Mitch. Later. That's really awesome. Thanks for really support. Really yeah, let's try to. I like that, dude. Let's sweat on the stream views. I kind of like that. Yeah. I'm just glad we're finally uh, using the goddamn SAT view for maps. Like, Jesus Christ. I've been bitching about that for so long because it's so nice to see the fucking color. It's not yeah, gray. It's nice to see all the stuff. Yeah, like. I do agree, though. The gray map is nice for, like, the tactical stuff. Yes. Oh, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It's it, that, that needs to be when things are popping off and going around. Yeah, absolutely. But, like, man, when things are spicy. I love the colors. When things aren't spicy, you can talk, you can see everything. Anyways, anyways. So, all right, boys. Hey, thank you again for production, and see you guys later. Absolutely. Peace.